An airplane was crashing through the thunderclouds. The situation was clearly not favorable. Lightning practically pierced it. Someone's tired eye was looking at this picture from inside. This person was definitely disappointed. The guy with the soft purple hair thought about it and was unexpectedly brave. Thanks to him it was possible to buy some time for the flight attendants. The terrorists were captured. None of the hostages were hurt. The captors were sitting on the floor tied up. No one was hurt, except for a chubby, red-headed guy lying on the floor with a gunshot wound to his stomach. And there was that tired eye again, only already closed and pondering. Why couldn't he, a typical fat homemaker, sit still? Did he watch too much Van Pees? He sat down at the TV again, stuffed his mouth with food. Then he played again, screaming for those zombies to die. And then he sat at his computer and wondered about something. And I guess those were the best flashbacks of his life. A neat blonde girl with bangs stroking a ginger cat flitted through his thoughts. He was angry at the thought that in 22 years, he still hadn't had a girlfriend. The guy didn't want to die. Someone shouted violently loudly for Batten to get up. It was terribly sudden and loud. He opened his eyes filled with wonder and a little fear. The guy woke up and presumably thought he had been resurrected. The fat man lay on the bed in a star pose dazed with incomprehension. How he had ended up here. He asked a guy named Noodles what he was still doing here. Is he still alive? While the roommate was getting dressed up. The same one threatened that if the chubby didn't go to the couples, he wouldn't be alive. It's like he's lecturing him. Grumbled surprised, I'm alive, getting out of bed batten. The young man still didn't seem to have come to his senses. He started gnawing on the bed rail with his huge teeth saying it was iron thereby making sure it wasn't a dream. Then I sat down at the computer again and turned it on. I went about my daily routine. The flamboyant empress appeared on the screen. It was probably a pretty interesting game for a baton. Then he went into Noodle's trash can and there were only tissues. It looked really weird. As soon as his roommate saw it, immediately said that one was sick, after which he immediately took the trash can in a rage. Puffy was sweating and yelled at Noodles to punch him in the face. I guess he didn't have enough to argue that he still existed. The guy said it was a 1 plus dot 1 promotion today and beat the fat guy back. It didn't hurt him one bit. Batten was finally convinced that this was not a dream. He was glad on the one hand but puzzled on the other. Noodles burst out laughing saying he was weird. But really what normal person would behave like that? Puffy asked what date it was, standing there confused again. He couldn't figure out how everything had happened. His friend was also shocked by the question and said that today was still August 7th. He scratched the back of his head in surprise. He immediately queried whether the 7th of August was exactly the 7th. After all, it was impossibly strange. Noodles started laughing with Batten again, meanwhile while he went to shower angry at his friend. The bathroom door closed with a loud bang. The guy must have misjudged his strength. The guy turned on the water. He was clearly relieved after brainstorming this morning. He stood in the hot water that was steaming, or had been steaming from his obsessive thoughts since the day began. Batten didn't understand what was happening and how he had traveled back in time three months. It's some kind of anomaly. In his confusion, he pondered and assumed it was a gift from the universe, but he still wasn't happy with it. Why didn't he move back three years? He wasn't satisfied with the little he got. Batten wanted better and more. And he was given only three months, and what could he change in that time? After all, even two months before, his life had been like Groundhog Day. Batten wondered why he hadn't bought lottery tickets. Now he would be not only alive, but rich. He was mad because he didn't even have a trainer. Even squeezed the soap so hard that it got away from the chubby. The soap slipped and fell onto the wet blue bathroom tile. It bounced around literally like a toad in a lake. He was silent for a second and thought he'd gotten a little cocky looking at the soap. After all, the universe itself had given Batten an incredible chance to be alive again. The boy bent down and picked up the soap which again almost fell from his hands. And he got the zen that he should be happy with what he was given. Because this situation gave him a new way of seeing the world. He was motivated to prove to the universe that he'd been given a chance for a reason. He'd already started thinking up a plan of action in the bathroom. He was sure he'd fulfill all his cravings. And not only that, the guy had tons of ideas of what he could do. We'll try and try and try no matter what comes his way and no matter who or what gets in his way. When he heard the sound, he realized that a trainer had probably come to him. Batten was incredibly pleased. Could he become immortal? That's the advantage of outliving everyone. Or he'll have tons of money. All the girls will be his no matter what they look like. And that's not the only privilege. Or he'll be the handsome one. That would be best because that's the guy's main complex. He sweated without realizing anything. His eyes narrowed to the size of thin straws. The fat man was in shock. The sound was gone and the pooch was confused. What had happened? Where did it go? These questions swirled around in his head for a couple of seconds. And he realized that it was an ordinary frying pan that had accidentally fallen on the floor at the wrong time. While Noodles was knocking on his door and pushing him into the vapors. His trainer was a frying pan. 
He was in disappointment, but on the other hand, it was even a little funny. The guy was scared of the frying pan. Batten finally came to the art academy. It was his educational institution with noodles. He decided that he would forget about the situation for now and hurry to the witch's office for his classes. That's what they called the art teacher. A young man and a girl said hello to the guys. The guy was probably a good one. It was Yang Gao. Chubby got nervous, since he knew that this person liked to play pranks on everyone. The girl with red hair turned out to be Gao's new girlfriend. The friends were shocked because even this freak has a girlfriend. Now Batten was the only one without a girlfriend. He's insanely upset about it, since he's always freaking out about it. Noodles started bashing him and he got discouraged, bullied him all the way to the end. The new couple told Baton to keep his head up and gave him some advice, but he was terribly hurt and sad. He wasn't even going to listen to them. After all, it didn't bother him yet. He was sure no one would ever like him. The boy sadly said goodbye and left for his studies. He ran alone and even resented Noodles a little. Noodles asked him to wait for him. He started to catch up with him again, realizing that he had hit his friend. They were discussing girls and relationships envious of Yang Gao, since even that freak had found a girl and was happier than ever. Batten was embarrassed and looked with amorous eyes at the charming dark-haired girl in a dress who was coming to meet him. That's where Tai Wei went. Looks like she was his inspiration and more. Noodles knew what was going on right away. Though a fool would realize that the fat man liked this beautiful lady. He provoked a friend to piss on her. And once again he started bullying and harassing his friend. Batten was furious. He didn't understand how best to act and wanted to prove Noodles wrong. Chick Wei stopped and turned to Meng Fan. She greeted him in a slightly flirtatious manner. He finally fell in love with her and shouted her name, thereby calling her to him to talk to him. Let Noodles know he's not a pussy. Noodles continued to incite his friend to action. Again incited the baton. An unknown motivation came to him. His eyes lit up with the excitement of getting what he wanted, or at least trying to get her precious attention. She asked how he was doing and called him by name. The girl was unbelievably beautiful. Fan sang a song about being in love with her and didn't realize why. He didn't even expect his actions and behavior. Wei was embarrassed, didn't say anything, and even seemed nervous. Her actions were impossible to predict. Then she started laughing loudly and talking about Batten taking the wrong pill today. Apparently she doesn't take the guy seriously at all because she was laughing so loudly. He said he hadn't eaten anything, much less taken any pills, got embarrassed and confessed his feelings. She still thought he was joking continuing to laugh without even thinking about offending him. Batten sweated and threatened that this was serious. The guy was insanely nervous and didn't realize what was going on between them now. She blew him off. It was insanely ruthless even though she looked like a beauty queen. She ran off and shouted back that she had a lot of things to do. The girl didn't care about Batten. She just teased him like her friend Noodles. Noodles was comforting his friend. Even though the situation looked ridiculous, he tried to cheer up his friend. The batons got a snotty 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 snotty. It felt like he'd been doused with water, but he was so nervous and sweaty. An icon popped up for Batten with his future achievement about the good guy. The guy didn't understand what this obscure menu was at all. It turns out that if he is rejected by a hundred girls, but will get this title of good guy, as well as many achievements to improve the baton itself. The bell rang and Noodles and Batten ran to the pairs with all their legs to that most terrible teacher. The boys were late again, Batten could hardly run. Both friends were out of breath and sick. They kept running with all their legs. They wouldn't want to be late for couples like they always were. There was a roll call and the teacher called Lu Fei's name. He was on the spot and vehemently confirmed it. Following behind him was Lu Feng. He raised his hand higher than everyone else, as if he was trying to reach up to the sky and pluck a star. He was also in place. It was noticed by the girl herself, or rather by the pretty teacher with silky purple hair. Following that, she summoned Meng Fan. It looked like it was the fatty and he obviously didn't come running in time. I asked him again if he was still there as I didn't hear the answer. So I wondered if he hadn't heard. The teacher again thought he hadn't shown up and the chubby guy just burst into the classroom with his friend. They were both barely on their feet, ten sweats coming off of them, as if the guys had run a cross-dot-country race through the entire academy. She got very angry, muttering that they were late again. It was like that all the time and nothing changed. Noodles said the fat guy actually had diarrhea and it was all his fault. It sounded crazy. The argument sounded awkward and stupid, but it seemed to have saved the boys, because they did go into the office. In response, she said she would give ten marks on the exam to each of them. It seemed to be in honor of the punishment for their misbehavior. It was Qin Jiao, the dean of the animation department, the cute but wickedly witchy teacher. She was giving a lecture about how it's not so important what serves as a cultural guide. Everyone listened attentively and continued to absorb the information about drawing. Not everyone seemed to be interested since everyone was minding their own business, especially Noodles. Batten was terribly tired, but Noodles didn't care. 
He mumbled something to himself. The girl with purple hair listened attentively to the lecture and was angry at the guy who was in love with her. Someone kept drawing pictures of the teacher saying she was a witch. It was Noodles and he asked Batten what he thought about it. He got nothing in reply and thought about it. He didn't answer and the man looked at him. In return, he saw the unconscious Batten dazed. Meng Fan, he doesn't seem to be doing well, he passed out. Noodles was horrified and couldn't understand what had caused this to happen. In his mind, he was thinking about how the situation with Tai Wei had shaken him up so much that he had become a fool. He was thinking about the trainer again. He didn't know what to do or if he should even think about it at all. His head was full of ideas, but not one of them was worthy at the same time. He still didn't understand what had happened. Mei Fan was very indignant and slapped his cheeks, saying that he would burn with shame if he did such a thing. I resented the awards and the superweapons. They were illuminated with different colors and it was not clear why. He doesn't understand who needs this. Why he had been given this chance to live again. The chubby man wanted nothing more. If he is rejected a hundred times then he is hopeless and forever alone. He is covered in sweat and misunderstanding. He finally regained consciousness and Noodles took notice. All this time his friend had been worried about him and wanted him to come back alive. He looked at his hand. It was round and he didn't understand why. It felt like it was dented from something cylindrical. He started jerking his arm and saying that the speed had increased. Batten couldn't stop and kept jerking his arm faster and faster. Noodles was thinking that he had not only become a fool, but also mad. It wasn't every day that one encountered such anomalies that happened to his friend. The instructor took notice and gave him a strange look. She too was stunned by such an act of a student. Mei Fan continued to twitch his hand and everyone was shocked. Literally all the people in the audience were staring at this incident. She stared at him intently and shouted an address to him with fury. He was completely covered in sweat and realized that she was really a witch. Maybe she'd cast her magic on him, or maybe she'd cast a spell on him. Puffy didn't know what was going on. She looked insanely scary with her purple hair, was like a demon. Her eyes were filled with rage. The guy stood up and said he was here. The guy stood up and said he was here, thus finally drawing the attention of all the people around him and more. She remembered that she could see everything. After all, maybe Mung hadn't been paying attention or had gone crazy with everything. The guy couldn't stop fidgeting and thinking about why he had drawn so much attention to himself with just one word about his presence. The submitter asked if it was true that he was preparing a report on the classification of clothing from different eras. Mei Fan was shocked he covered his mouth with his hand, sweaty and nervous thinking what report and what they had already said. Puffy was still standing and speaking uncertainly waving his arms. His thoughts were that he couldn't just say he'd been watching anime instead of studying all this time. She shouted at him and looked straight into his soul but didn't understand what he was mumbling there. Still, he answered her that he was preparing a report, but it was a lie. The young girl really was furious. She said he would read it in the next class. Everyone in the classroom fell silent as it was simply immoral and impossible. She gave him three days. It sounded like the kind of insanity that no one could handle. He realized, sat down on the floor and sobbed. After all, how could one create so much work in a given amount of time? It was getting dark. The streetlights were illuminating the university. It felt like it was almost midnight. Batten sat there wondering how to get everything done in three days. It was simply not possible for an ordinary man. It took him three hours just to write the content. It was crazy. Three hours of torture. He was exhausted and didn't know how he would draw. He had no ideas or motivation. Still, he got to work and thought he'd draw as much as he could. It would be something. Better than nothing. So that's what it is. I looked again at the menu that was displayed to him. I was trying to figure out what was going on and what the rules were. He's already got a plus for hand speed. That's what it was. Now I know why his hand was so twitchy on the pair. He continued to draw diligently. The drawings came out literally perfect and in a very short time. He was crazy fast. He worked even faster than the printer in the office building. Batten himself couldn't believe what was happening to him again. And again, some kind of miracle had happened. Batten was glad that everything was going so easily for him. It would now be possible to cut down the time in his work tremendously. The hand helps not only in one thing, but also in drawing. These thoughts did not give him any rest. Maine has clearly already tested his hand in another case. Yeah, well, who wouldn't have? He set the pile of drawings on the floor. It looked like he'd gotten through the report faster, much faster than he'd thought. And the teacher fell at his feet. Pitifully, she hugged Mung's leg and knelt down. It was in his fantasies for what seemed like an eternity. He realized that he would eventually reach his goal with super arm strength. He continued to paint diligently. He was getting crazy fast. He'd been talking in vain about the trainer. After all, his hand speed had saved him more than once. The fat man wondered why he was wasting his time drawing instead of earning more rejections. It seemed like a better deal to him. He pondered which girl to choose. There were plenty of them in the library, and they had different preferences. One blonde, one redhead. 
In general, all colors of the rainbow and tastes could be found here. Not having come up with a strategy at all yet, he was already planning and choosing the best one, that she would definitely turn him down. What should I tell them? There was no time to think. The guy proceeded to pick up the young ones for profit. He had awakened a former excitement for the talk to get a reward for his further labors, even drooled at the temptation of beautiful ladies and their overabundance. The guy got even more nervous, and even worse, he tensed up, afraid to approach. Although on the other hand, the witch won't be nice to him, she'll just give him a two. He hit the table. It looks like he made a decision to change something in the program and in life too, and decided that he would act. Because what the hell is not kidding? To begin with it was necessary to at least try something. But propositioning a stranger outright isn't really an option either. It would be at least not nice of him. He'll pick the prettiest one. This became his strategy at first because a pretty girl should definitely say no to a fat guy. The next day at the library, it looked like Batten had big plans for the day as he finally decided to earn more points. He decided that he would act decisively and not be afraid. He didn't have to do anything, just open his mouth and mumble something. The girls would take care of his task. A guy walked into the classroom and saw a beautiful girl. The only goal in his mind was to get new grades and acceleration to his hand. She had bangs and she was glowing, that's how beautiful she was. It seemed to be the best and most appropriate choice for May. He turned around quickly and thought what was wrong with him. Couldn't get close enough. He had to come up with a new method of accomplishing the mission. After all, he wouldn't get very far in his mission. He had an idea. He hoped he wouldn't miss this time. He had to try something and he had to piss. Baton stood up abruptly from his chair and began to do something. He took pencils and paints, looking like he was drawing a beautiful girl on his paper. He drew an invitation for the girl about the proposal to go out to dinner. What the hell? He needed to build up the strength for his desires. He thought he was a genius. After all, such a pretty girl should have rejected him specifically and clearly. Standing at the back of the class, the chubby was getting in the mood for action, and as always pissed to show himself to a young and enviable lady. Finally, he abruptly put the paper on the table and walked away. The guy banged on the table so loudly that she jumped up and down in fright. Or rather, he didn't leave. He ran away. You could find a million synonyms for what he did. Chickened out. Got scared. Ran into the wrong thing. He was as excited as possible because he wanted to hear her verdict on what the girl thought as soon as possible. The girl crumpled the sheet and threw it away. I guess that counted as a rejection or not. It wasn't clear yet. She threw that crumpled sheet at him as if she had no respect for anyone at all. And she didn't seem to care about the baton. The leaf fell to the floor. He picked it up with tears from nerves and overexcitement. He could not wait until the moment of rejection and it all seemed strange. She wrote that he should stop eating dinner altogether, implying that he's a Jew. And not only did she demean his looks, but his ego as well. He wondered if that counted as a rejection. His ego had gotten a point lower because the baton had failed utterly. The program didn't let him know he'd done everything. Probably didn't get any points for it. The guy texted her asking her out. It was his last chance. It looked like the baton's scheme wasn't working at all. But hope springs eternal. Handed the sheet back again. Just like that he ran across the classroom and waited again. It was an unbearable five minutes. The girl read for a long time. She didn't seem at all worried about what he would think of her. He watched to see if she was coming to him. The waiting was unbearable. The pretty girl didn't even lift her head to look at the stranger. All he could think about was rejection. He replayed the word rejection, rejection, rejection every time. Batten didn't understand what had happened, because she just walked past him and didn't say anything. Like she should have said something. How was he supposed to figure that out? Batten was really upset about the situation. How? Just how? She hadn't even said anything or held her gaze. Nothing like that had happened. He wondered if she couldn't just blow him off and walk away, disappointed finally. The guy didn't know what he was supposed to do. This scheme didn't seem to work at all. He'd relied on it so much. He'd have to change his strategy again. He thought again about the best way to approach them and get them to blow him off. Meng Fei gathered himself and asked the Lord to give him strength. It seemed to be his one and only hope that he had joined the Lord. Batten decided and approached the first victim. He touched her shoulder and said that she was very beautiful. He then showered the beauty with compliments. She turned around and wondered who he was. Maybe they had known each other before? He obviously wouldn't like that. Batten asked her out. I had to get one rejection. The girl was horrified and wondered if they didn't know each other. She had freckles on her face, but it didn't matter much with her ugly lips smeared with red lipstick. He didn't care what she looked like. The guy just wanted his own. He wanted an answer. And at first he went crazy with these assignments. She said no, apologized in an overly insincere and extremely nasty, rude way, and hinted that she had a boyfriend. The app gave me an answer about completing the task. It was incredible, because it meant the circuit was working for him. 
he would soon get more speed and finish the report. Batten laughed with joy. He nearly burst from the overabundance of emotion on his face, apologized to another lady and got away from trouble in the library. He realized that the scheme was working. He was finally being rejected by everyone. Even the men didn't seem to be interested in the fat man. But you have to be delicate, because they may misunderstand and accuse you of harassment. He approached the new girl and said hello. She reacted very strangely, even a little frightened. The guy started showering me with compliments and suggested we get to know each other better. She turned him down and reiterated again that she had a boyfriend. The chubby had already apologized. He went up to another girl with ponytails, started hitting on her. She blew him off. The boy bowed and apologized. He was too embarrassed to bother everyone, so Mung started apologizing to those he approached. He approached the other one again. She turned out to be a lesbian and Batten ran away. He had not expected this turn of events and was very embarrassed. Meng was hitting on the new girl again with the goal of achieving hand acceleration. It was a guy. It was not even possible to assume that it was a guy because he couldn't even see the man's face. He didn't think it was very clever. It wasn't a woman after all like he wanted it to be. The app sent him the new accomplishments. Looks like the guys counted too. He hadn't even expected that. He only has one rejection left to get. I wonder if he'll be able to get it all done. The guy was walking down a long white hallway after which he suddenly crashed into someone. This person was obviously much taller than Batten. He was a tall, bespectacled man who said he was a man fan. His black hair covered half his face, and his height made it impossible to see the man's face. He thought, who the hell is this guy? I mean, what kind of guy is weird but fun at the same time? Turns out he's seen six pickups on girls. Looks like it was performance art to the glasses guy. They were all different. That's what the guy noticed. The baton had no type at all, and no difference in who to hit on or hit on. Some were even guys. This made the guy even more excited because it was rather unconventional to watch such a thing. Glasses liked it. After all, there was something special about him, and without shame he could so easily loosen up and get acquainted. Batten was sweating and ashamed, as it had never happened to him before and he could not even expect such a turn of events. He asked who the guy was. He asked who the guy was because he didn't introduce himself at all and started talking and asking a lot of questions. The same one said that Batten would let him introduce himself. The guy's sweating. He was overexcited. He turns out to be Xiao Yu's public educator and he wants an interview. Batten got nervous and asked if he was a journalist. He was afraid that his shame and the six rejections from girls and guys would get on the net. He turned out to be the moderator of the BBS group, biggest team that could give a guy a lot of opportunities. They have 300,000 followers. Of course, that number is just incredible for Batten's very desire to get a bunch of rejections, and he doesn't need the fame as he'd stop getting rejected. Batten distracted him by yelling that there was a UFO. Meanwhile, the kid was fooled, and Batten ran away as fast as he could. The educator turned around. He seemed to realize that his idol didn't want to flutter about girls. The guy was already gone. There was a shadow of him. That's how fast he ran away from the bespectacled man. The man with the glasses was confused. No one had ever fooled him so stupidly before. He didn't understand how he could have been tricked like a child, though he himself had fallen for such a stupid nonsense and trap. Batten kept running, because he thought the journalist would want to catch up with him like a true fan. He was thinking about what kind of fool would give him an interview if he fell for it. Well, I guess he got off. Somebody said hello to him. It was a charming girl. She asked how to get to the workshop. Batten was happy to suggest. She smiled sweetly and said thank you. Her smile seemed to sparkle like she'd won a million, but she'd just be helped to find her way. The lady turned and walked away, which was expected, but it looks like Batten's up to something again. Meng called out to her again to ask for directions too, or more likely for another stupid ride. She interjected with dreams. It sounded like there was a problem with her hearing, or she just didn't want to make contact with him. She started asking him where he should go too. She was confused that a creep like that wanted to hit on her. He started openly hitting on her. Naturally, she said she had a boyfriend. Here's the workshop itself. Time was running out, so the fat man hurried into it. The girl said he was cute and wished him luck. The notification from the app came again. He did everything correctly as he got another point. Batten was happy that the second stage had arrived. After all, it means that his hand speed has accelerated, and the third stage of the good guy trials is not far off. The guy ran to the academy that as soon as possible to get the matter over with, he ran to the painting workshop. He went into the workshop office. At the same time, he thought about the girls and the shame he had suffered, and about the report too. There were empty easels with canvases, clean room with clean sheets of paper. It's hard to think of anything for this case. He stood across from them. Sighing, he thought about what he would draw, and how best to show himself on paper for better recognition of the witch. Focused. He was extremely serious about it, since the question of his expulsion would depend on it, and began to draw confidently fast. I wanted to try out the new speed and the opportunity to show myself. He flew around the classroom with brush and pencil trying his best and fastest to check and finish everything. 
a charming girl was drawn. The lines are the smoothest, and the drawing itself is not better than nowhere, and in a small time. On the other easel was also a female, with silky hair and graceful eyes that penetrated directly into the soul. Batten himself had not expected such talent. It's the same on the third one. She was wearing a cap, and it looks like it's a motion picture. This one was insanely cute, too. The paintings were amazing. Everything was drawn to the finest detail, down to the smallest detail in a matter of seconds. He was praising himself as much as possible. This case would have taken at least a week before, but now he'd gotten through half the report so quickly. He only had to get the third stage and was thinking of a new strategy, since it would not be long before he would be able to finish the report, which would have a lot to do with it. How could he get 90 rejections in no time? He would not have been physically able to do it, and he was afraid to approach. My phone vibrated. It sounded like a text from someone. Baton hadn't expected someone to text him at all. It was Noodles. He asked to wait for him in the workshop. Strange thought, Batten, as he had expected otherwise. But definitely no way to see a text message from his friend. But he didn't care about that. He realized he didn't have to approach them in person. It was too long to go around a hundred girls. Do a mass mailing, that was his plan. He thought the idea was brilliant because of its scale. Of course, ignoring him might have been more than usual. Since getting that kind of nonsense from a total stranger was crazy. Batten sent out a dating proposal to just about anyone, because it would work, and he didn't care what anyone thought of him at the moment. Send it off. Had to wait quite a while as the mailing was just insanely huge. There was a girl. She certainly didn't expect to get anything from a guy and didn't get the hint at all. The other one with blue hair. While her blue silky hair was waving in the wind, she got that text too. The third blonde. I guess she didn't expect Batten to write to her either. That was really weird. Mung Fan pressed the send key on the mass mailing list with a dating proposal message. The guy was very pleased with himself. At this moment, a thought came to Meng Fan. He wasn't sure if his plan would work. Meng Fan wondered if rejection via messenger would definitely be taken into account by the system. He should have only sent a couple of girls a confession first and see what would come of it. But unfortunately, Meng Fan realized it too late. The guy was very angry with himself. He didn't understand why he was so stupid and didn't think of this before. Meng Fan excitedly looked at the phone, waiting for the result. There was already nothing to be done anyway. The guy just had to wait for the girl's response to see if his plan would work. At this moment, the guy's phone started receiving replies from girls, some asking if Meng Fan had sent it by mistake, the others thinking that he had sent the wrong contact. It wasn't all straight answers, however. The guy needed the girls to blow him off head bond for the system to count it as a rejection. The system was still only registering 10 failures. We had to admit that Meng Feng's idea didn't work. The guy gathered all his will in his fist and decided to go all the way. He typed to one of the girls that it wasn't a joke. He once again asked if she would go out with him. Meng Fan was very pleased with himself. He thought that this time the girl should definitely reject him clearly. Responses started coming in, all of which were direct rejections of the relationship proposal. The scoreboard was now showing 13 refusals, which meant that the girl's refusals had been credited. Meng Fan was overjoyed. Meng Fan started receiving other messages in which the girls refused to go out with the guy. In some they called him names, and some they refused quite gently. But still Meng Fan was hurt by the girl's words. Meng Fan even fell to the floor from such pressure from the woman's side. He wasn't sure if he could withstand such psychological trauma. The guy struggled to raise his head and was about to look at the system's scoreboard. At this point, there had already been 55 rejections. A peacefulness came to Meng Fan that his plan had worked. Though the lad was pleased that his manual dexterity had increased, he felt social death. Meng Fan finally came to his senses. After being so shocked by the rejections, he opened his eyes. The guy picked up his phone and thought that no matter how the girls treated him, it was better to apologize anyway. He sent everyone a message apologizing for the inconvenience. The guy felt like he was lying in a coffin. Noodles ran into Meng Fan's room. He was very angry. Meng Fan turned around to see what his friend was going to do. Noodles flashed into the room and almost knocked Meng Fan off his feet. Noodles was very angry that Meng Fan had confessed his love for his girlfriend. He was going to strangle his friend. Meng Fan made excuses that Noodles had misunderstood everything. Noodles showed Meng Fan a message from his girlfriend, in which she said that he had confessed his love for her and proposed dating. The guy asked how his friend could explain that. Meng Fan said he had the wrong addressee. Noodles angrily yelled why Meng Fan didn't cancel sending the message when he saw that he had the wrong addressee. Meng Fan said that he realized it too late and it could no longer be undone. His neck ached from the strangulation attempts from Noodles. At this moment, Noodle received a message from his girlfriend. She thought that Meng Fan really might have gotten the wrong addressee, as her friend had also received a confession from him. At this point, the girlfriend said that it was more complicated than that, and more than 10 girls had already received similar messages from Meng Fan. Noodles asked a friend why he sent a dating proposal to a large number of girls, 
The boy didn't know what to say to his friend. He was pouring sweat from embarrassment. Noodles asked what was going on with Batten and how many girls he had confessed his love to and if it was their whole group. Mung Fan did not know what to say to his friend. He could not tell him about the system. Noodles said that he didn't recognize his friend because he used to be afraid of girls like fire. Noodles already thought that his friend was crazy. He couldn't think of any other explanation, but all the guy's actions were because of the system. A brilliant thought came to Mung Fan at that second. He wondered if the rejection received from the guy would count. After all, the system must take into account that the guy might have been gay or become gay in the process. He decided it was worth a shot with a guy, and if he did, he'd say he was messing around. And his first victim was going to be Noodles. The guy began to put his plan into action. He approached his friend with a serious look. Mung Fan said that he was really crazy. The guy started to act out a love melodrama and pretend to be in love. Mung Fan added that it was love that brought him together by himself. He put his hand on Noodle's shoulder. Mung Fan tearfully asked if his friend knew why he had confessed his love to so many girls. Noodles did not understand at all what his friend was doing now or what was happening to him. Mung Fan leaned into Noodle's ear and said that it was all to make everyone around him think that he liked girls. The boy moved closer and closer to his friend's ear. He was about to tell him when his heart started to beat harder. However, Noodles interrupted him. The guy abruptly bounced away from Mung Fan. He was embarrassed and asked what the guy was doing. Mung Fan said that he pretended to be straight all the time, but in fact he adores guys. Noodles was scared of his friend. He asked him not to get close. Meng Fan pushed his friend against the wall. He said that he would behave more affectionately with Noodles than his girlfriend. Noodles looked at his friend with horror. He did not understand how to get out of this situation. Mung Fan asked his friend to open his heart to him and reached out to kiss him. Noodles almost died of fright. The boy abruptly jumped out, out of Mung Fan's embrace. He was dumbfounded by the whole situation. The guy yelled that he thought he and Batten were friends and he turns out to be a guy by guy. Meng Fan was about to ask directly if they were going to kiss. Noodles sent him away. He was very angry at his friend's actions. Meng Fan looked at the table. The guy's refusal had been counted. So refusals were not only accepted from girls. Noodles asked if Meng Fan was really gay and asked him not to disappoint him. Meng Fan put his hand on his shoulder and said that if he didn't want to, he didn't have to. They could still be friends. Noodles replied that it was too late and the friendship was over. Mung Fan confessed to his friend that it was just a prank. He thought it was an Oscar. Noodles yelled at him, clearly not happy about such a stupid prank. The guy started goofing around, Noodles tickling Mung Fan and trying to elicit from him what was going on after all. Mung Fan replied that the friend himself had bitch, slapped him about not having a girlfriend. So he tried spreading the net on his advice and sent the girls the same message. Noodles doubted this. Meng Fan started fooling around with his friend again. He asked if TT was disappointed and if Noodles preferred that Meng Fan wanted him. Meng Fan decided that enough joking and fooling around. The guy wanted to go out to eat. He had a treat today. It was a clear sunny day outside. The guys came to the nearest coffee shop. Meng Fan ordered a large amount of food to make it up to his friend. For this, Noodles had almost stopped resenting him. Meng Fan held his phone in his hands and looked at his rejection count. The guy decided that since rejections from guys counted as well, he could make it to a hundred at their expense. Noodles noticed that his friend hadn't touched his food and asked why he wasn't eating. It wasn't like him. Mung Fan was all sitting on his phone. He was actively typing something with a very sly look. Apparently, the guy was sending out messages. At this moment, Noodles snatched the phone out of his hands. He was wondering what Mung Fan was doing there. Noodles thought that maybe Mung Fan was spreading his net again and sending confessions to the girls. Mung Fan was angry that his friend had snatched his phone. He told him to sit back down and keep chugging and return his phone. Noodles looked into Mung Fan's phone and there he saw a correspondence with some guy. Mung Fan confessed to him and asked him how he felt about spending the night together. But that guy turned him down. Noodles was shocked that Mung Fan was offering himself to other guys. He yelled about it to the whole cafe. Mung Fan jumped up and asked him not to yell like that. Noodles couldn't figure out if Mung Fan was gay or just retarded. Mung Fan asked his friend to be quiet. Mung Fan couldn't think of anything better to do than to tell his friend that he had a bet and needed to get a hundred rejections. Noodles could not believe that his friend had made a bet for it was not like him. Mung Fan said that it was nevertheless true and he was already close to the goal. Noodles asked if the guy was afraid to confess to everyone. Mung Fan wasn't afraid to confess, especially since no one had reciprocated him yet. Noodles looked at Meng Fan sadly. He felt sorry that no one liked the guy so much. Noodles gave Meng Fang the phone. Tomorrow again had to go to the witch to pair. Noodles asked, prepare to report for his friend. Meng Fan, after getting his phone back, the first thing he did was look at the bill. There were already 87 rejections. The guy said that he was in the process of preparing a report. Meng Fan messaged the guy some more, and in the end, he achieved his goal. 
100 rejections were received, and he ended up with a plus 16 to his hand speed. Meng Fan stood up from the table. Now it was a simple matter for him to prepare a report. Meng Fan came to the workshop to work on the report. The boy walked into a spacious room. In front of him was a large number of easels. The young man brought with him a stack of paper on which he was going to draw. Meng Fan began to set himself up for fruitful work. He was excited to make use of his new powers. It was time to get to work. The guy was in full gear. Meng Fan took some of the paper from his huge stack. The young man tossed all the sheets up. They scattered all over the room. Meng Fan took two pencils in his hand. He thought that he would be able to do it much faster this way. The boy jumped high into the air and said forward to his armchair friends, the pencils. Meng Fan began to work fruitfully on the creative report. His drawing style was more like martial arts. He started going through sheets of drawings in the blink of an eye. Guy drew people from different eras in China. The first were the Qin and Han. He depicted their traditional costumes. Next, Meng Fan drew the Sui costumes, Nanbei. The drawings were very good. The guy started drawing the other eras and their clothes in a flash. He was doing several drawings in a second. At one moment, the young man stopped. He was thinking about something. The boy turned around and saw the unfinished drawing. He asked where the man had flown to. Meng Fan finished him off in a flash. The drawing showed the Qing dynasty in luxurious traditional dress. Meng Fan was very proud of himself. He skillfully applied his new abilities. Meng Fan finally landed on the ground from his creative flight. Around him, his drawings were dropping to the floor, the guy finally getting a chance to take a break. There were a whole bunch of drawings and they fell in a pile on the floor. Meng Fan finally finished. He breathed a sigh of relief and spread his arms. Meng Fan thought that plus 16 to hand speed works wonders. The Chinese part of the report was handled quickly by the guy but he hadn't even started on the foreign outfits. He had to cover Europe, Egypt, India, Japan, and more. The guy looked at his watch. It was already 10 o'clock in the evening. The couple was starting at eight. Meng Fan clenched his hands into a fist. The guy needed to push himself to get things done in time. The next day came. It was morning, and all the students were hurrying to their classes at the university. Meng Fan had also come. He was standing near the entrance to the auditorium. The boy thought his big moment was coming soon. At that time, Noodles was behind him. He wanted to scare his friend. Noodles shouted behind Meng Fan's back. The boy was not in the least bit frightened. Meng Fan was angry with his friend, for he had almost scared him to death. Noodles asked where he was last night. The guy thought his friend hadn't made a report and went to hang himself. Meng Fan confidently replied that this was how his friend had yet to be so misguided, and he was ready for class. Noodles would soon see things for himself. Meng Fan was confident in his abilities. It was Chin Chao's pairing time. She was yelling at the students to all take their seats. The girl turned her attention to the guys and asked why they were balking there. Meng Fan and Noodles became quiet in an instant. They were more than a little afraid of Qin Chao. All the students sat like a string at the lecture of the dean of the faculty. The girl started the lesson. Qin Chao asked Meng Fan to come over to her. Meng Fan jumped out of his desk with a satisfied look and said that he was on his way. The boy wasn't the least bit afraid. Noodles was worried about Meng Fan. The guy thought that his friend wasn't the first to go crazy making a report for the witch. Meng Fan became proud, he thought. These mere mortals didn't even realize that they would be witnessing a true miracle very soon. Meng Fan picked up his backpack. He thought that the teacher wanted to ask him about her assignment. The guy was about to pull his report out of his backpack. He was ready to show everyone the work he had done. Qin Chao frowned and said that they would talk about the report later. The teacher handed Meng Fan the phone and told him to read the message in front of everyone first. There was a message on the girl's phone from Meng Fan saying that the guy loved her and offered to date her. Meng Fan was ready to fall through the ground at this moment. He realized that he had mistakenly sent Qin Chao this message when he was trying to score points. The guy didn't understand how this happened, since he only sent the message to female students. Qin Chao was disappointed in the guy. She had always thought he was a contracting young man. But since he let himself treat teachers like this, she would have to teach him a lesson. The teacher looked angrily at the boy. He had himself to blame for this. Qin Chao asked what was wrong and told her to repeat aloud what the guy had written to her. Meng Fan started to mumble something. The girl wondered if the guy had decided to divert her attention with this declaration of love, just so she would forget about the report. The audience was in shock. The guys were talking over each other. Almost all of them had gotten a confession from a guy yesterday too. Noodles sat puzzled. He was surprised that the guy had confessed his love to everyone. He suspected his friend was nuts. The two girls sitting in the audience were discussing this situation. They realized that it seemed that they were not the only ones who had received such a message. And if the guy had sent it even to the witch, he must have sent it to all the girls he knew. Two guys were also discussing the situation. One of them thought he only confessed his love to the guys. The other didn't realize that he had sent it to the guys as well. Somebody was having fun, he thought. That's how the guy should be. Now the witch is going to punish him to the fullest. 
Meng Fan tried to justify himself and somehow get out of this situation. He asked to be heard. Qin Chao told the Guto say so. If he did not fulfill the report all his tricks he could change on his girlfriends. The girl was very angry. She said that punishing the guy would set an example for the others. The teacher was about to come up with a punishment. At this moment, Meng Fan took out a huge stack of papers from his briefcase and tossed it to the girl on the table. This was his report. Meng Fan said he had done everything. Qin Chao didn't expect this. She looked at the stack of papers in surprise. The teacher picked up some of Meng Fan's drawings. She made sure the guy had everything ready. The girl didn't understand how this was possible. The guy started talking again in the audience. They thought the guy was lying about having done everything and thus burying himself even deeper. Qin Chao paged through the drawings in surprise. She was convinced that Meng Fan had actually prepared the report, and his work was done at such a high level. There were at least 500 sheets in his report and not even the Celestials would have drawn them in three days. Qin Chao was sure that the guy had someone's help. The girl looked angrily at Meng Fan. She said that since he had done everything, he should defend this report in front of everyone. Meng Fan was confident in his strength. He said that he would do everything now without any problems. Meng Fan began his report. First, he decided to introduce the boys to Chinese outfits, and he wanted to start with the Tang Dynasty. Meng Fan began to list the distinctive features of the outfits. A little later, the young man moved on to foreign outfits. He talked about medieval costumes. The audience sat in shock from such preparation of the guy. Qin Chao listened to Meng Fan's report with amazement. She couldn't believe that the guy had done everything by himself. Noodles was surprised at when the friend had managed everything. Qin Chao did not understand why the guy confessed his love to her, unless it was for the sake of distraction. The girl thought that it might have just been a hormonal surge. The guys in the audience were amazed by the quality of the report. They thought the guy was very talented. They did not recognize the young man. Absolutely all the students in the auditorium started clapping their hands and sending Meng Fan a round of applause. Even the ferocious Qin Chao was in a stupor, her hands reaching out to pat Meng Fan herself. The guy was proud of himself. He thanked everyone for their attention and finished his report. The teacher looked at the young man in surprise, but in the next moment she came to her senses in a flash. Qin Chao coughed, said that Meng Fan had performed well, and told him to return to his seat. The guy thought for a second he was in no hurry to sit back down. Meng Fan wanted to explain himself about the messages since he was standing in front of the female teacher. Qin Chao hoped that Meng Fan wouldn't ask for her hand like in snotty melodramas. The young man said that he argued, and so most likely all the students in the classroom, including the guys, got his message declaring his love. Qin Chao breathed a sigh of relief. She thought that she was blown away. The teacher realized what the matter was. She advised Meng Fan not to get involved in such arguments anymore. After all, he was a promising guy who should be doing useful things. Meng Fan bowed and apologized to everyone. He promised to definitely make it up to the guys. The bell rang to announce the end of the lecture. All the guys started collecting their books and notes and had to leave the auditorium. Meng Fan was still sitting in his seat. He was staring at his phone. Meng Fan was approached by Noodles. He said that the guy had shocked everyone today and asked how he managed to do everything. Meng Fan showed his friend his circles under his eyes. They were the answer to Noodles' question. The guy grabbed Meng Fan's cheeks, he still didn't believe him, and asked if the friend had made a deal with the devil. Meng Fan asked Noodles to back off. It gave the guy a headache and he needed to make it up to the guys. Noodles inquired as to how his friend was going to do it. Meng Fan was going to send red envelopes to the group and they contained money for the guys. Meng Fan did as promised. He sent the guys envelopes of 200 yuan each and apologized for the inconvenience. Noodles was surprised at the guy's generosity. At this moment, the system sent Meng Fan a new task called Spender. The guy needed to spend 1 million yuan. After that, his luck would increase by one point. Meng Fan was surprised by such an amount. Meng Fan thought that the task where 1 million yuan had to be spent was a mistake. It was a very large amount of money. The task was divided into four stages. Each stage was to spend more money ranging from 10,000 yuan to 1 million yuan. The guy will have a plus one to luck when completing the task. And for each stage, he will only get points added. And that's it. Meng Fan didn't understand what these points for each stage of the task would be good for. The guy looked at the group chat where he sent all the guys red envelopes with money. The guy got a notice that he had spent 3,000 yuan out of 1 million yuan. Meng Fan thought that he had made very little progress on the task at all. The guy didn't know how to complete it. Meng Fan was very angry. He angrily yelled at the system and sent it far away. All this was observed by Noodles, who was standing next to the boy. He didn't understand what caused all his friend's emotions. Noodles said that Batten looked like a madman and asked if he was possessed by demons. Meng Fan was furious. He yelled at his friend and said that he was about to put his fist in the guy's face. Noodles was able to calm Meng Fan down. He told him to shut up and squeezed his mouth with his hand. Noodles got one of Meng Fan's envelopes. He invited the guy to go eat on him. Meng Fan's mood changed at the same moment. The guy got excited. 
Meng Fan put his arm around Noodles' shoulders and said the guy suggested it himself. Meng Fan decided to screw with the freaking system for now. It was much more important to go get some refreshments right now. It was dark outside. The whole sky was dotted with stars. The boy returned to the dormitory. It was half past nine in the evening. Meng Fan sat in his dorm room at his desk. His surroundings were a mess. The guy didn't know what would happen if he didn't complete the current task, whether the system would give out the next one. If it didn't happen, the guy would have this task hanging over him for the rest of his life. Meng Fan wondered if a million yuan was worth it in exchange for a plus one in luck. The guy was extremely satisfied with his hand speed. He thought it would be quite useful to pump up his luck as well. Meng Fan remembered how he had finished the art assignment with great speed. The boy was chewing chips. At this moment, the realization came to Meng Fan that he did not have such an amount. He wondered where to get a million yuan. The guy's mind was filled with bad thoughts, and he couldn't think of any other options. The boy thought, this is not the way to do it. Meng Fan imagined that his mother would kill him for such ways of extracting money. Meng Fan was scared out of his mind at his mother's reprisal. There was a pile of food on Meng Fan's table. There was a soda standing there and some chips lying around. Meng Fan decided to calm down. He would act on the situation if the system didn't issue another assignment within a couple weeks. Then he would revisit the problem again. Seconds later, Noodles ran into the dorm room. He announced that Batten was now a celebrity. Noodles read out a paragraph from his phone. It told how Meng Fan confessed to the girls in the library live, how he tried a new phrase each time he approached. Meng Fan didn't understand what his friend was talking about, so he picked up the phone and looked at it himself. There was an article about a fat, homely man in pursuit of love, authored by Xiao Yu. Meng Fan immediately remembered the guy he met in the library. It was the same public commentator from the library. Meng Fan frowned and carefully began to read the article. The guy breathed a sigh of relief and thought that it was a good thing Xiao Yu didn't know Meng Fan's name and didn't post a picture of him. The guy threw the phone back to Noodles. He asked what he had to do with it because neither his name nor his picture was in the article. Meng Fan was confused from the appearance of a new problem. Noodles said that the fact that Meng Fan sent about a hundred declarations of love was not just a coincidence and his reaction just confirmed everything. At this moment, a sudden realization of the entire situation came to Meng Fan. He realized that if Noodle had guessed, the rest of his classmates would figure it out too. The situation was unpleasant. Noodles didn't think it was such a big deal anymore. The guy had already explained everything to everyone, smoothed things out financially, so he might not worry too much. Noodles began nervously reading the comments below the article. The guy frowned. He didn't understand what kind of people were writing all this. Meng Fan looked at Noodles in surprise and asked what was wrong. Noodles hid the phone behind his back and said with an awkward look that it was no big deal. Meng Fan didn't really believe his friend, but decided not to question him further. Noodles suggested playing a computer game to get the topic across. Meng Fan refused and replied that he would watch anime. The guy continued to eat the chips. At this time it was a dark night. There was silence all around. The street was illuminated by a bright moon. It was half past six in the morning. It would be light soon. Meng Fan didn't sleep. He kept reading the comments under the article. They were mostly negative calling the guy a fatty and a pig. The guy was very upset by these comments. He felt bad reading it all. The guy cringed. He kept remembering events from the past, these thoughts never leaving the guy. Meng Fan thought about how he had confessed to the girls in the library back then. He replayed these events in his mind. Meng Fan tried to analyze the reasons for the refusal and the words the girls said. Meng Fan was very polite to them, but all the girls still refused him. Meng Fan recalled the pain that the rejections of the girls who came through messages had caused him. What Meng Fan realized was that it all came down to only one thing, his excess weight. Meng Fan got up from the bed. He didn't want to continue giving them a reason to ridicule him. The guy was determined he ran to the bathroom to brush his teeth. After that, Meng Fan began to put sneakers on his feet. The guy quickly threw on his gym uniform. Meng Fan clearly decided for himself that he would lose weight. The guy threw all the junk food in the trash. Meng Fan got rid of Coca Dot Cola, chips and sweets. From this noise, Noodles woke up. He opened his eyes in surprise and looked to see what was happening. Noodles asked Meng Fan where he was going, for it was still dark outside. The boy was already at the door, he went for a run. Noodles was surprised that Meng Fan was going to take up sports. He couldn't believe it, since this kind of behavior was uncharacteristic of Meng Fan. Noodles thought that he was still asleep. Meng Fan had wanted to lose weight and start running for a long time, but it never came to actual action, until his death he thought he would start tomorrow or Monday. But since life gave him another chance, the guy decided to take full advantage of it. The boy resolutely began to run forward. He was optimistic. However, soon it became harder and harder for him to run. It became difficult for him to breathe. He was out of breath. After another minute, Meng Fan could no longer run at all. He walked slowly, all of his muscles shivering. The guy thought he was going to have a fractured lung or something. 
he thought he was going to die. Meng Fan was in very bad sports shape. He couldn't even walk anymore and spat face down on the ground. In the end, the pair was only able to cover a distance of 100 meters. Meng Fan was very upset that his experiment had failed. He thought that he was already too fat and now running was something beyond for him. Meng Fan saw someone approaching him from the side. He continued to sob. A beautiful girl walked up to the guy. In Meng Fan's eyes, she was all shiny. The girl gave the guy a hand and asked if he was all right. Meng Fan was embarrassed and blushed at the fact that such a cute girl wanted to help him. The guy replied that he was perfectly fine. The girl took his hand and helped him up. Meng Fan Po thanked for the help and asked if the girl went out for a run. She replied that she jogs here every day, but she had not seen the guy before. Meng Fan said that today is the first day he started running. The girl patted the guy on the shoulder and said what a good boy he was and that he should keep it up. Meng Fan was embarrassed and said that he had only run a hundred meters. The girl replied that the important thing was that he had taken the first step. The girl already had to run away. She advised Meng Fan not to give up on this matter. The boy said goodbye to her. Meng Fan promised that he would not give up running and would go all the way. At this moment, Meng Fan visualized a girl with angel wings and a halo above her head. The guy was sure she was an angel. The girl really liked Meng Fan. The girl's words gave the guy confidence and motivated him. He decided that he would not give up. Meng Fan confidently rushed into the period. It was difficult for him to run, but he still tried. Meng Fan, as promised, did not give up. He was able to run a little more already. At that instant, the guy got a notification about adding a new task. Skorokod. Meng Fan looked at the notice. He was very happy that a new task had opened up. The guy breathed a sigh of relief, because now it was possible not to worry about the fulfillment of the spender. The task said that it was necessary to pass 10,000 kilometers, and for the completion of the task he would get 10 to speed, to strength, to endurance. The guy was shocked at the distance. He didn't understand how anyone could think of giving him the task of walking 10,000 kilometers. Sasha kept thinking about this distance. He compared it to the length of China. That was only 4,500 kilometers from west to east, and the guy has to go that distance twice. He was just in shock. Meng Fan's nosebleed as soon as he thought of how hard it would be for him to complete this task. Today a guy ran a few hundred meters and almost died. He didn't understand how he should complete this task. Meng Fan estimated that even if he regained his form soon and started running 3 kilometers a day, it would take him about 10 years to complete the task. Meng Fan imagined himself in his old age performing these tasks of the system. The guy was furious. He was sure this system was bullying him. The system sent him a message that said, Try to do it. Don't give up and everything will come. The guy thought it was a bullshit quote. After a moment of pondering the message, Meng Fan thought that perhaps there was something to it. Meng Fan realized that this could be the key to solving the tasks. It was only after he tried to start running that this task opened up to him. And if he keeps trying and doesn't give up, then maybe the system will surprise him with something else. Meng Fan was sure that nothing in this world comes for nothing. And if you do not strive for anything, do not take any attempts, heaven will not help you. Meng Fan was very motivated. He believed that it was better to start acting than to sit around and whine. Meng Fan looked at the stages of the Skorokod task. There were as many as 15 of them. The guy thought that it was even better, because if he couldn't complete the task by the end, he would still get rewards and progress after completing each stage. And the more he pumps, his stamina strength and speed will increase, and it will be easier and faster for him to accomplish the next stage. Meng Fan saw the running equipment button in the system. The guy was overcome with curiosity. He wanted to know what else the system could surprise him with. Meng Fan pressed the equipment button. The system began to change. Blue holograms appeared all around. The system showed the guy a menu. There were different items such as sneakers, jump ropes, clothes, and more, all of which cost a certain number of points. The guy was very excited to see this button and decided to press it. Meng Fan finally realized why there were points given for completing this task. Sasha now only had 111 points. The guy had enough of that for a pair of sneakers worth 100 points. Right now, they were needed more than anything. Meng Fan clicked on the icon with the sneakers, and the characteristics of the sneakers came out. The guy didn't understand anything, but he was very curious. The sneakers also come with a plus one for speed, which is exactly what the guy needed. At this moment, Meng Fan's knees ached sharply. He didn't understand how he had managed to hurt them for a couple hundred meters. It was probably because he was wearing the wrong running shoes. Meng Fan took another look at the characteristics of the sneakers. They suited him as much as possible. The specs included knee protection, as well as a speed boost. The guy decided to buy them after all. He pressed the button. The next instant the system started flashing, sneakers appeared in the guy's hand. Meng Fan nervously looked around. He was worried that someone would see the actions of the system. He breathed a sigh of relief that no one was around, or he'd be the hero of some local blog again. The sneakers the system gave him were very small. They fit in the palm of his hand. 
The guy didn't understand how to wear these sneakers, whether they were another gimmick from the system. Meng Fan felt sad. The next moment something started happening to the system again. Blue flashes appeared in the air. A blue hologram appeared right in front of the guy. He didn't realize what was happening. At this point, normal-sized sneakers appeared on the guy's feet. Even though they looked the same as the last couple, it felt very different. Meng Fan noticed that even his sweat had all been absorbed somewhere and it was as if he had pillows on his legs. Meng Fan was very happy with his upgrades. His feet were very comfortable. Meng Fan decided to try out the sneakers in action and walk around in them a bit. As soon as he started walking, information about the distance traveled. The time of sneaker use, stride length and calories burned appeared in front of him. The guy was amazed by such technology. Meng Fan was very happy. He decided to start by running one kilometer in his new sneakers. Meng Fan started to run. The control and measurement processes were started. The next moment the system detected critical errors in the carrier's movements. It asked if Meng Fan wanted to apply force corrections. The guy agreed to have the system tweak his running technique. The system applied forced adjustments to the carrier's movements. Meng Fan began to run much more correctly. The guy noticed that his legs felt like they were a little stiff. Even though the guy wasn't very comfortable running, he immediately felt a noticeable reduction in the strain on his knees. Likewise, Meng Fan also noted that his speed had increased slightly. At this time, the sneaker wearer ran 500 meters. The system was encouraging the guy. After a while, Meng Fan had already run 800 meters. He was quite out of breath and very tired. The guy couldn't run anymore, although he now has miracle sneakers. But his body is not ready for such loads. Dousing himself in sweat, Meng Fan thought that that was enough running for today. At this moment, Meng Fan remembered the girl he had met earlier. She had told him not to give up. Meng Fan thought that if he gave up so easily, he would continue to stay in his comfort zone and such angels would always be out of his reach. The guy had already set a goal of running one kilometer, so he decided to run one kilometer. Meng Fan sat on the ground, drenched in sweat. He had still managed to run this distance in 20 minutes and had consumed 500 calories. It was already light outside. Meng Fan, although very tired, was pleased with himself. After completing his goals, it felt really good on the guy's soul. For some reason, he hadn't noticed it before. Some time passed. It was half past six in the evening. Classes were in progress in the university auditorium. Professor Qin Zhao had already finished her lecture. She let the guys go. Noodles told Button that there was no way he could guess what he dreamt last night. Meng Fan assumed it was a video game. Meng Fan laughed and said that he had a dream that a guy got up for a run and it sounds like the beginning of a joke. Meng Fan awkwardly said that it was not a dream and he really decided to take up sports. At this moment, the guy's dialogue was interrupted by Qin Zhao. She turned to Meng Fang. The guy didn't understand what the girl wanted from him. He asked what was wrong. The professor took the guy out to dinner on her dime. Noodles was shocked that the witch had called Batten to dinner. He even thought he had misheard. Meng Fan just couldn't refuse. He said he was on his way. The guys in the audience started to talk. They were joking about the situation. It is night outside. The protagonist walks through the door of the dorm room. He is tired and exhausted, sweat dripping from him in hail. His friend Noodles notices that he's back and remembers to mention that Batten is all sweaty. Noodles holds up his phone and notes that the main character is tired and has silently gone to the bathroom without explanation. Batten entered the dormitory restroom and slammed the wooden door loudly behind him. Noodles contemplates with a satisfied look that his version of events seems implausible. But it seems to be true, he thinks. He imagines in his mind Batten, who is bound hand and foot and at the mercy of a witch. Noodles is convinced that the witch is a completely abnormal girl. He's not surprised by her very specific choice of romantic partners. Batten comes out of the shower room all wet, wrapped in a towel. He is pleased that he was able to wash himself after all. Just then he is surprised to notice that something is happening nearby and expresses his surprise aloud. Batten sees a sudden movement in the room, but can't figure out what exactly happened. Seconds later, he is already on the ground, slumped over by his friend Noodles. He piles on top of him and demands that the protagonist confess what happened between him and the witch. With a sly smirk, Noodles asks the still surprised Baton a vague question. If there was anything unusual between the boy and the witch. Shaking off his neighbor's hand, the protagonist aggressively accuses his friend of being crazy, much to Noodles' surprise. But the guy's abruptly dropping his friend's arm from his shoulder caused it to slip uncomfortably. Noodles' face shows an extreme degree of shock and outrage at what is happening between him and Batten. Batten is also surprised. At the same time as his neighbor, he opens his mouth and shrieks loudly in surprise. Due to an awkward fall, their faces end up a centimeter away from each other. The guys are not happy, and the situation looks romantic on the surface. It is at this awkward moment that the door of their dorm room swings wide open and Lee Dakyang, another student living in the room, finds himself there. Misunderstanding what is happening, he is embarrassed and is about to leave, apologizing for disturbing them. But the guys yell for him to come back. 
Noodles begins to zealously assure Li Da Qiang that things were not really as they looked from the outside. Li Da Qiang took a calm attitude and tried to calm the guys down. He said he did not condemn the affair between the men and cited a quote from Chinese writer Lu Xin. He is trying to convince them that he treats them normally and is not at all against this relationship and has said that he will not end his friendship with them on this basis. Batten is angry with him and grabs the student by the collar. He yells that he needs to listen to Noodles' explanation without interrupting him. Noodles begins to explain. He talks about how the witch invited Batten over, after which he came back exhausted. He decided that the witch and Batten had been doing something wrong. After Batten came out of the shower, Noodles started questioning him, and this questioning accidentally ended with the guys almost kissing. Li Daqiang is initially unhappy with what he hears, but Batten praises his friend for clearing up the misunderstanding between the neighbors. Discouraged by what he hears, Li is greatly surprised and dumbfoundedly interjects, not fully understanding what he's talking about. After misinterpreting what Noodles told him, he decides that things are far more confusing than he originally thought. Batten is already tired of misunderstandings and calls his roommates stupid. He begins to recount what really happened. He says that the witch called him to dinner to apologize for accusations of laziness. She was also impressed with his report and showed him a book to make images for. As one, both comrades refuse to believe it and are skeptical of everything Batten says. Batten looks at them with a sullen expression, displeased that they don't trust his words. He pulls out and shows them a book with the novella Thousand Year Dream from the author Xiao Ti as proof of the truth of what he said. Li Dekiang and Noodles look at the book with admiration, their faces showing delight. They find it hard to believe that this is a new book from this writer. Li Dekiang picks it up and stares at it mesmerized. He says it's amazing and points out that Xiao Ti writes the best novels and that he himself is very fond of her work. Noodles is more skeptical about it. He says that this writer has already turned down a large number of illustrators and that Batten shouldn't pursue it because then he wouldn't have time to play games with Noodles. Joyful Batten says he knows about it, but thinks it's a great opportunity to do something other than having fun in his free time. Noodles asks him to tell him about his relationship with the witch. He says that he has noticed that Batten cares for her, and that she treats him strictly for some reason, but also cares for him. The main character remembers her giving him candy as a child, and being friendly to him. Batten says the reason is simply because his mother was a teacher to her, due to which they knew each other from a small age. Upon hearing this, Li Dakyang says that if the main character's mother was trained as a witch, then she is not as simple a person as she may seem. Noodles suggests that Batten may have been born into the family of a good artist. Batten says they've got themselves something wrong, and that he's just a regular overweight recluse. Noodles tries to cheer him up and says that if Batten loses weight, he can play the part of an attractive man in movies. Satisfied with this, Batten smiles and agrees with Noodles' compliment in his direction. Batten states that in order to lose weight, he decided to run twice for two kilometers every day, and that is the reason why he came home tired. Noodles is surprised by this, and interrogates Batten to see if this is actually the case. Li can't remember anything appropriate from ancient Chinese literature. As proof, Batten shows his phone with a sports app open, showing that he has run three and a half kilometers during the day. The guys can hardly believe it. Noodles suggests that Batten started jogging because of negative comments online. He is sure that he started jogging for nothing, because if he stops jogging, he will hate himself for it. The guy smiles and assures them that he will run risk-free and that it will boost both his health and self-esteem. He goes to bed, covers himself with a blanket, and tells his neighbors that he has to run tomorrow morning. He falls asleep thinking that he can prove to everyone that he's worth something. In his dream, he sees himself running alone in space on a glowing track for a distance. There are obstacles set up on the track and he jumps over them during his run. The signs say he's fat and that he should just give up and stop trying. He does make it to the end. He's tired and sweaty, but all the obstacles are behind him. He sees a man with wings and a halo around his head. He realizes that it is an angel with the face of the girl he met at the sports ground. Angel praises him for his success, for Batten catching up with her. The boy is happy about it. Sleep is abruptly interrupted by the deafening sound of the alarm clock. The phone reads half past six in the morning. He wakes up. The guy realizes that what he saw was just a dream and notes that he didn't see the girl at the stadium yesterday. Immediately afterward, he begins his daily routine by brushing his teeth. As he gets dressed, he ponders whether he'll be able to meet a girl today. Then he leaves. The noise of the closing doors woke Noodles, who was still asleep. Noodles is surprised, and thinks how early Batten woke up for the sake of going to the stadium to practice. Batten comes alone to the sports field. There is no one there, and he thinks with regret that the girl has not come, as she did yesterday. But he also finds a positive aspect to it, and notes that it's not so bad since he's not yet trained enough to wow her with his looks. He starts running with thoughts that it will be good to get pumped up and attractive. The system notification tells him that he needs to correct a movement when running and offers him a correction. 
but he has already figured out which movements are correct. With determination, he decided that now only he would control his body. The system notification wishes him good luck. Batten happily notes that he can run on his own and continues running around the circle of the court. While running, the system notification shows the statistics for the workout. The hero has already covered 2 kilometers in 20 minutes. His speed is 13 kilometers per hour. He is surprised by this speed and is happy that it is faster than during the previous workout. He also notes that he still has enough energy for the third kilometer. Suddenly he sees the silhouette of a man running in front of him, but doesn't immediately see who it is. He immediately breaks sharply and stops running, surprised by what he sees. He sees a girl near him and she talks to him, saying it's him again. He smiles and answers her awkwardly. She turns to him with a smile on her face. She notices that he has rapidly improved his physical condition and tells him that she is his I hardly recognized it. The main character and a girl are running around the stadium. She praises the guy and says that he is rapidly developing and running. He smiles and agrees with her. The girl wonders if he was working out professionally before he gained weight. Batten doesn't understand what she's talking about. She replies that his running technique matches that of a seasoned athlete and that he places his feet perfectly during the run. He says excitedly that the reason for his technique is watching sports-themed videos online. The guy is ecstatic, and in his thoughts he is genuinely pleased at the praise in his direction from the girl. She says his progress in running is very fast. Just recently, he could only run 200 meters, but now he has already passed the 2-kilometer mark. The boy thanks her for her praise. Batten is already sweaty and tired from his long run. He wants to ask her a question, but is interrupted. The girl increases her speed and begins to move away from him, and tells the guy to continue at the same pace. Batten finishes his question. He wanted to ask her name, but she's already too far away to hear. Her speed is too fast and very quickly she is broken away from Batten by a decent distance. The guy wants to catch up with her and get her name, but he can't catch up with her, which he complains about. He stops with fatigue and realizes that his physical development is not yet good enough to keep up with her. He ponders aloud that since the circle measures 500 meters, he can just stop and wait for her to catch up with him. He wants to talk to her then. As he stands, badly fatigued from running, the girl swiftly runs past him. Batten is shocked that he lost his chance to strike up a conversation with her again. He starts running again, guided by the logic that standing post is too pathetic, so he needs to keep jogging. As he runs, a system notification pops up that says he covered 3 kilometers in 33 minutes. The protagonist stops and notes that the purpose of the run has been accomplished, but he doesn't want to leave without socializing. He starts walking thinking about the fact that he still has a chance of meeting her if she's doing her post-workout warm-up. Suddenly, an object flies right over the protagonist's head. He looks up trying to figure out what it is and swears in his thoughts. It turns out to be a drone hovering in the air. There is a pink-colored object attached to it. The item turns out to be a scroll, which right in the air begins to unfold. When it is fully revealed, the hero sees an inscription on it that says Hu Yansong loves Wu Tong. The character is extremely surprised and shocked by what he sees on the scroll. He sees a guy walk up and give flowers to that girl in the stadium. The guy is solidly dressed in fashionable and neat clothes. Along with flowers, he confesses his love to her. The protagonist is upset by what he sees. He also realizes that the name of his acquaintance is Wu Tung. Feeling defeated, he starts to wander away. He thinks that since she already has a boyfriend like that, he doesn't stand a chance. While walking back, he sees someone's shadow on the ground. Noodles appears in front of him and says that he has finally realized what exactly has changed in Batten's life. A disgruntled Batten asks why his neighbor came to the set so early. He says he wanted to make sure Batten was actually jogging, but saw him watching Wu Tung. Batten wonders if they know each other. Noodles says that he knows her and that she is a well-known beauty in the traditional painting department and that he is surprised that Batten has not heard of her. The main character says it makes no difference if he knows her. Since the girl already has a lover and he has no chance of having a romantic relationship with her, Noodles calms him down, saying that nothing is yet clear with those guys and that Batten is putting his hands down early. Batten is skeptical of this and interjects noodles. Then he sees that Wu Tung has already run away, and the guy is seen on the sidewalk, crushed by the beauty's rejection. Batten lights up with happiness. He is glad that the girl rejected the guy, and that he is not to her liking. Noodles begins to recount information and gossip he knows regarding the situation. The guy who proposed to Wu Tong is named Hu Yan Song, and he's one of the richest students at the academy. This major has been trying to win Wu Tung's heart for a long time, offering her various gifts, but all this time he hasn't had any success with this girl, and she rejects him every time. Noodles calms Batten down and says he still has a chance. Batten says it's time for them to go eat and stop gossiping. Batten thinks with confidence that he can really succeed in winning a girl's attention if he manages to lose weight. It's coming up to lunchtime on Saturday. The protagonist arrives at the workshop. He sits there with pen in hand, looking intently into a novelty book. He thinks about that rich student, 
and realizes that if he doesn't get his weight in order, he won't be able to compete with guys like that. Then he focuses on the illustrations for the novella. He ponders what a reputation as an illustrator of a famous book might lend to his credibility. He looks at the canvas and thinks about the character in the book, a cute girl who goes everywhere with her pet. He lists her traits in his mind, kindness, activity, politeness, intelligence, and then begins to confidently and quickly paint the character on the canvas. The resulting girl looks exactly like Wu Tung, except she's dressed in the garb of a bygone era and has a pet on her shoulder. The hero is surprised and doesn't understand why he drew this with Wu Tung's facial features. He then notices that Wu Tung's appearance suits the style of the drawings from the short stories. From his side, he hears a familiar voice say, Care coincidence. It turns out to be Wu Tung herself. Batan asks what she's doing here, and she says she came to the workshop to paint too. She looks at the hero and notes that he too came here at the same time as her. The hero says that he and the girl walk the same roads. Wu Tung notices the image, stares at it intently, admires it, and notes its similarity. It comes to the hero's attention that she is looking at an image he has drawn of her appearance. He freaks out and starts to assure her that he wasn't trying to portray Wu Tung at all, and that he took a completely different girl for the character. Hearing his excuses, Wu Tung smiles sweetly and covers his eyes. She points out the pet on the painted character's shoulder and says the rabbit is depicted as real. Batten has calmed down and is sweating. He hesitantly thanks her for complimenting the painting. In his mind, he's angry at himself, not understanding what kind of nonsense he's talking about and why he's nervous about interacting with Wu Tung, even though he's already received many rejections from both genders. The girl sits down next to him in front of a nearby host. She begins to draw, and he thinks he would do well to keep quiet, lest he say something inappropriate. He takes a brush and dips it in the paints in front of him, mixing colors to get the shades he wants. Finally, he finishes the drawing by coloring it completely. He is happy that his work is finished. A notification pops up with a new task. It requires the protagonist to create drawings, and has a reward in the form of points, and an increase in the protagonist's imagination and drawing skills. Batten is pleased that the new quest from the system is perfect for him, given his skills. With his pumped-up hand speed, he will be able to handle all four stages of the task quickly and easily. He goes to the interface and looks at the list of available items he can buy with the points he has accumulated. He goes to the menu and sees a striking visual, and there is only one item on the list of available items, a pen worth 100 points. Batten comments unhappily on the lack of items. He touts the description of the pen and prepares to read all the details about the item. Batten is surprised to see that it improves drawing skill, and it's also made of great materials and can change modes. He realizes that this pen is all an artist could possibly need, and that's why it's the only item on the list. But he only has two points out of the required 100, so he has to put off buying the item until later. Wu Tun looks at him worriedly, waves, and asks if he's okay. The guy realizes that he's been immovably standing there staring at nothing for some time now. Batten embarrassedly replies that he was just thinking about it and there's no reason to worry about him. Wu Tun is about to leave for another canvas and talks about how she still has homework to do. Batten is surprised that she ends the conversation so quickly and reluctantly says goodbye to the girl. He doesn't say anything as she steps away from him and goes to another canvas, but he's not happy about it. He gets annoyed at himself and thinks he lost the chance to socialize with her after she herself started the conversation with him. He reflects on the fact that there is no benefit of losing weight if he cannot talk to girls properly. He thinks he needs to be more confident because he can impress people with his skills. He glances uncertainly at Wu Tung working nearby near the canvas. He reflects on the fact that just showing off drawings is a poor strategy for dating. An idea pops into his head. He decides to draw a picture and ask the girl for advice about it to start a dialogue. Batten draws several characters at breakneck speed, and he receives a system notification that he has completed a stage of the task. He rejoices that he was able to kill two birds with one stone and got 12 points for it. Confident and satisfied, he prepares to approach Wu Tung as he intended. He fantasizes about her approaching him on her own surprised at the number of drawings. She asks if he would like to study with her. In his imagination, she pulls out her phone and suggests he add her account to his friends list. He replies that knowledge should be shared with others and agrees to add her. He looks at his canvas next to him and sees a full-length sketch of the character there. Then he looks at the girl's work at the other end of the room. He makes a coughing sound, trying to draw Wu Tung's attention to himself. A camera is placed above her canvas and she addresses the streamer audience that today's stream is coming to an end. She thanks the public for the support of viewers and receives approving comments from users. She notices the main character next to her. He wonders if she is streaming. She replies in the affirmative. She says she didn't notice him. He replies that he wanted to ask for advice about the quality of the drawings. She takes the character sheet for the short story out of his hands. She looks at him and says she's majoring in traditional painting, so she's unlikely to be able to help him in any way. Batten is unhappy that the dialogue is not unfolding according to his script. She does give him advice, though. 
recycle the limbs of the male characters, and use ink when illustrating them. He's excited to see what she's answered him, and interjects. He wants to use the mascara to get the dialogue going in the direction he wants it to go. He cheerfully asks to borrow her brush, she agrees, and hands it to him. He quickly and confidently draws a line through his character drawing with this brush. Batten looks at the result and notes that the character looks completely different now with these additions. He then decides to use mascara to enhance the appearance of the novel's female characters. Around one of them he draws a ring of ink in the drawing. On another sketch he adds a dark thick line and a bamboo pattern. Wu Tun looks shocked at the change, her eyes going wide as she looks at the drawings. She marvels at the protagonist's drawing speed and he rather says there's nothing special here. In his heart, he is very happy about the fact that he was able to impress her with his skills as an artist, and was able to not shy away from the conversation. She says that with such talent he could be a streamer of drawing himself. As soon as she says this, the hero receives a notification of a new task, which requires gaining a lot of views on her streamers. He's surprised that he got the new quest right after he got the previous quest. He notices that the assignments used to open up when he started doing something, but now it only came from the girl's idea. This assignment gives a bonus to Charm, and Batten wants to increase that. He starts laughing out loud, forgetting that he's still standing beside Wu Tung. She asks if he's laughing because she said something stupid about the drawing. He gets nervous and berates himself. He ponders that he needs to calm down and hopes she doesn't think he's crazy. He says he laughs just from the excitement of the idea of being a streamer. She says goodbye to him and is about to leave the workshop after gathering her things, but he tells her to wait. The girl asks what's wrong after hearing his request to stand. Batten is unsure of himself and is trying to gather his thoughts and not get nervous when speaking. He says he doesn't know about streamers and suggests she discuss it during dinner together. She says she doesn't mind but she's already made plans for tonight and can't have dinner with him. Batten is frustrated, doesn't know what to say, and begins to sweat with nervousness. He asks if he can add her to his social media friend list. He's again very nervous about such a question, and he's not sure how she'll answer him. She holds out her phone with a smile, and offers to copy the code to add her as a friend. He's happy about this and pulls out his phone to add Wu Tung. Suddenly someone takes the smartphone out of his hand and tells him to wait. Batten stares dumbfoundedly at his hand, which just a second ago held a cell phone. An inexplicably appearing guy holds up his smartphone and asks how such a reclusive guy can be clueless about streaming. Wu Tun stands up for Batten and tells this guy to give Batten his phone back. In response, he shows her the desktop and tells her he's tricking her and asks her to turn the writing to Batten's downloaded apps. They all look over there and there are five different programs on his screen at once for watching streams. Wu Tun does ask the guy to give Batten his phone back though and says she understood. The guy hands back the phone and says that Batten doesn't know who he is and that he's not on the level to be friends with Wu Tung. He hesitantly excuses himself and says he just wanted to add her as a friend. The guy aggressively replies that he should add sports to his life and threatens to turn him into a meatpacking plant if he molests Wu Tung. The girl asks the guy to leave already and together they walk out without saying anything more to Batten. The protagonist looks at her frustratedly but doesn't say anything else. That same day at noon, he comes to the sports field again for a run. He runs around the stadium, contemplating what just happened. He's not happy with the guy's reaction and thinks he was just being a little snippy and didn't deserve such aggression. He agrees that he did live like a pig in his past life. He recalls that he spent all his time at home on the couch eating a lot of junk food. As he runs, he looks at his figure and his large belly bulging out of his t-shirt. He reflects on the fact that so far the results of his workouts are not that visible, although he is working hard on his body. He thinks he needs to work harder on himself so that those around him perceive him differently. He sees a system notification that says he has completed another stage of the task and increased his stamina characteristic. He is confident that he will succeed. The action continues in the stadium where the main character is training hard. He looks at the characterization screen and is delighted that he has passed the first stage of the running task. He says that he would not have been able to accomplish such a thing in his previous life. He reflects on the fact that one should really not give up and then one can achieve a distance of 10,000 kilometers. He contentedly agrees with the system notification that it will work out. He keeps running, feeling like he can still manage a few more laps of the run. He says it's thanks to pumping up the stamina characteristic, making him not get tired so easily now. He believes that he will be able to cover 5 or 7 kilometers due to increased speed and endurance characteristics. He decides to think about prioritizing among his available jobs, spender, stream master, illustrator, and speedwalker. He put the jogging task at the bottom of his priorities. Reward in the form of characteristics will allow you to perform the painting task more efficiently. Next on his list of quest priorities, he puts the tasks Illustrator and Stream Master. He argues that improving draw and other metrics will improve stream quality and task efficiency. And at the end of the list, he places a spender's task that requires you to spend a huge amount of money. 
The reason for this is that successful streamers and illustrations for the novella will bring in money to fulfill the spender quest. This plan, according to the guy, will pump him up and make him lucky, charming, rich, and powerful. He is happy to be steadily improving and feeling progress in his new life. In the evening of the same day, the hero again goes to the art workshop of the Art Academy. He sits alone in front of a blank canvas and stares into his phone. He decides it's best to host streams about drawing on the Station 8 app, since it's favored by fans of contemporary culture. He clicks a button on the app and enthusiastically starts preparing for streaming. The protagonist starts thinking about what exactly to draw on his first streamer. He decides that he needs to paint something familiar to the general public, and decides to paint what he is most familiar with. He uses a mount to attach his phone over the canvas to conduct the stream. He then checks that all the items and tools needed for the artwork are in place and at hand. Batten shines with joy and is confidently ready to start hosting the stream. Before he starts, he decides to send an invitation to the groups he is a member of to gain viewers. Among his groups are groups about anime and drawing. He is very surprised when he looks at his screen after the broadcast has started. He sees that quite a few viewers have appeared. That's 77. They are actively writing comments in Batten's chat room. He thinks of them being so supportive because he previously sent them money after failed declarations of love. He tells the audience that no face will be visible as the camera will be pointed at the canvas. He promises not to disappoint them and thanks them for the gifts. He gets comments from viewers. Some of them criticize the boringness of the broadcast, and others support the guy and ask questions. As the portrait is painted, there are more and more comments noticing Batten's speed of painting and rapid progress. Gradually, the image that the main character draws becomes clearer to the audience. It is a pretty girl. Viewers praise the looks and figure of the girl in Batten's drawing, although some commenters mock the author. Then the audience notices that the painted heroine is wearing a uniform and cap. Some commenters say she looks familiar to them. It then comes to the audience's attention that this woman is General Esdes, a familiar character to them. Batten gains confidence and begins to add more and more detail to the sketch at a tremendous drawing speed. He finishes the sketch in black and white, completely drawing the attractive heroine in uniform and short skirt. The public clearly enjoys his work as Batten begins to receive more financial donations from viewers of the broadcast. He then begins to accelerate even more and draw with tremendous speed due to his increased hand speed characteristic. Finally, he finishes painting the heroine and her outfit in shades of white and blue and finishes the job. People who watch the broadcast are shocked at how quickly he was able to uncolor the heroine and finish the drawing. Batan sees many comments of praise from the viewers. Also during the stream, his audience numbers have increased manifold. In addition to the comments, the protagonist also sees a lot of donations to his name that come from the impressed public. He rejoices in the success and thinks about how good it is, considering it was only his first drawing stream. He's pretty contemplative about what else would be worth drawing for the audience after this. He thinks it would be a good idea to draw a character that more people would recognize, since the previous heroine took a long time to guess. Since that character was associated with ice, he comes up with the idea to make a depiction of a fiery character this time. But then he realizes that the topic, the streamer he specified, is the characters of Onisan and isn't sure what to make of it. Then he smiles slyly and a new thought pops into his head about how to combine it all. He sets up a new canvas and asks how quickly the audience can figure out what character he's painting this time. He starts a new sketch with a different character quickly and confidently. The illustration shows a girl with her hand covered in flames. Commentators are trying to figure out who the artist is now trying to draw. He adds details and the audience is still not sure what kind of heroine it should be. Gradually, the audience begins to recognize the girl's accessories and some details of her outfit. Then the audience begins to express indignation, noticing the resemblance of the heroine's clothes to someone familiar. One of the comments even threatens the author. Baton finally finishes drawing a sketch of the girl. The audience is shocked when they see the finished image of the heroine dressed in shorts with an A-belt. There are a lot of unhappy comments coming in for Batten, as he drew a female version of a much-loved character from Van Piss. He receives a message from Noodles, who does not understand why the hero made this drawing. Disgruntled viewers gradually leave the streamer, and Batten is surprised by such a strong reaction. Batten stands in front of the canvas with a disgruntled look and presses something on his phone. He's upset about the comments, but he's sure it's only a few people in the chat room that set that mood. Below the painted portrait, you can see outraged comments who don't like that the author portrayed a female version of the character. Batten decides to ask for help and writes to the group, asking them to tell the public that such images are entirely in order. Someone under the nickname of Fatso writes a message to the hero and says that he will fix everything if he is appointed as a moderator of the stream. Batten is relieved and agrees to this and assigns him admin rights in the chat room. He returns to the drawing, confident that he can now draw in peace without paying attention to what's going on in the chat comments. Comments are starting to appear that defend Batten and write that such illustrations are completely normal. After that, the new moderator Fatsojik sends Batten several donations to his account at once. 
The main character looks at the screen and notices some changes. Fatty blocks several users who were stirring up negativity on the broadcasts. Batten saw this and was pleased with the positive change. Satisfied with what he sees, he smiles and says that the situation has improved. One user writes a message that he was late to the start of the broadcast and sends a digital gift to Batten in the form of a large gold unit. Batten is surprised at the viewer's generosity when he sees that this gift is worth a lot of currency and that the thing is called a ring of attraction. Batten sees that the gift he received starts a raffle that people who logged on to Batten's broadcast can participate in. He's excited that because of this giveaway, a lot of people will stop by his stream for a chance to get a gift. He picks up his painting supplies and begins to quickly create an image on the canvas. Now that he can ignore the chat, he paints his previous picture very quickly, in a matter of minutes. Positive comments appear in large numbers. Users speak well of his speed of creating paintings. He picks up a new sheet of paper and prepares to start drawing the next image. He draws attention to his number of spectators. It rises rapidly from 500 participants to 1,000. He is delighted with the rapidly enlarged audience and decides to paint while so many people are at the broadcast. He starts painting the image on the canvas faster and faster, which surprises the audience. The speed of his drawing continues to increase by the minute. He speeds up, drawing new lines at an almost inhuman speed. The audience marvels at how quickly he creates a drawing, but he's only gaining momentum thanks to his hand speed characteristic. It becomes too fast, to the point where the process starts to look unrealistic. Commenters are beginning to suspect that this is not live, but simply a recorded and sped up video of him painting. Other commenters write that it is indeed his speed. Batten notices that many users have left the broadcast because of this, and decides to slow down with a quick painting. He sends a message to the moderator to keep the audience on the broadcast and not let them disperse. The moderator agrees. Batten begins to slowly paint something on the canvas at the side of the image for the stream viewers. He writes whether this speed is suitable for viewers, and users finally realize that this is not a recording, but a real live broadcast. Many viewers seeing this are surprised by such speed and write about it in the stream chat. Other users reply to them that it can be understood by the pauses in the broadcast, and that they need to watch the stream more carefully. The moderator and other viewers write in to make sure no one leaves the stream, and that this is not a previously recorded video. Batten calms down and thinks about the fact that those viewers who left will probably still come back to the stream. He picks up his brush and continues his work with diligence. He is sure that he just needs to paint. Finally, he finishes drawing the girl, and viewers recognize a familiar character and write positive comments in the comments. Batten is pleased with the good reception of his work, and decides to keep streaming and drawing new characters. He has decided that he now wants the audience to not be able to guess the character until the last one, and is starting a new portrait. In the painting, he draws clouds of smoke on a blue background. The audience asks questions and cannot understand who he is painting. The drawing succeeds, and only then the audience recognizes the heroine. Many users write praise in the direction of the author and the image. Next. He draws another girl from another franchise and again receives positive comments regarding the quality and speed of his work. Inspired by the support, he begins to paint the next heroine on the canvas, starting with her silhouette. He draws an anime character with great speed, which the chat room immediately recognizes easily. Rei Ayanami's image elicits a positive reaction from viewers in the chat room. They praise the picture and ask who else the main character wants to draw. Batten takes another piece of paper and begins to speed up to create the next drawing. Gradually, a masterful and quick drawing of the next heroine appears on the paper. Chat recognizes the woman with the katana, Rangiku, and proceeds to write rave reviews of the character's work. Batten notices the increase in the number of viewers. It has risen to 1,000 again during the broadcast, which he is surprised to see. He tells the audience that it's time to end the stream and that he's drawing the last character for the day. The audience is surprised that Batten has started speaking in his voice. They write comments about it. The broadcast has been going on for two hours. Batten decides that today's teens don't know the next character, so this stream will educate them as well. The audience tries to figure out who he is painting as the outlines of her figure and tight-fitting clothes appear on the canvas. Batan finishes the drawing, and it turns out to be Fujiko Mene. Not all commenters recognize her, but many like the image. Having finished this illustration, Batten sips his slumped shoulders and announces the end of today's stream. He then says that the next one will be held tomorrow night, and that he plans to paint ten images. The commentators say goodbye to the author and he presses the button, ending his first hosted stream. He gets soon encouraging feedback in private messages, with some people offering to help him with follow-up broadcasts. He thanks everyone and decides to look at the results and stats of the broadcast he just did. He has accumulated 500 subscribers, but he thinks this is quite a good result for the first time. He also received 2,100 yuan, of which he gets half. He looks to see that the streamer app has increased his level and is 10th after this broadcast. The maximum possible level is 40, 
but it requires accumulating a huge amount of points from users. He believes that in two or three such sessions, he can complete the first stage of the relevant task and be rewarded. In his thoughts, he goes to the sports field where he starts running. He tries to catch up with Wu Tung, who can't see him yet. Finally, he manages to speed up and catch up to the girl during her run. But the imaginary Wu Tung wants nothing to do with the cheater and avoids him at all costs. The hero is frustrated and sad, imagining such a scenario. He ponders that it would be nice to apologize to her after what happened between them at lunch. But he puts those thoughts aside for later and begins his daily evening jog at the stadium. The morning alarm clock wakes him up at half past six in the morning and he wakes up from his nap. It is still dark outside. Batten comes to the stadium where he is all alone. Wu Tung isn't there so he can't talk to her. He gets upset again, thinking about how she doesn't want any more contact with him and that's why she didn't come today. In her imagination, she tells him to keep his distance from her and not to come any closer. He tries to think of a rational reason why she didn't show up today. He doesn't think she'd miss a run because of him. He decides not to get worked up, but to calmly do his tasks without thinking of anything extra and starts running in circles. He's already running quite well, with increased speed and stamina, noticeably better than just recently. A system notification tells him that he's already passed the 5 kilometer mark, and he needs to lie 4 more to get the next reward for the task stage. He focuses on running and decides here and now to finish this stage and continues running in the stadium. He desires a final push to reach the designated goal of 4 kilometers. Finally, he finishes running and falls to the ground, exhausted and tired from the long run. The system shows him that he has completed the second phase of the speedrunner task and has been rewarded with an even bigger boost to his strength score and more points. Evening is coming on outside. The protagonist stands near his canvas in the academy studio. He looks at the messages he received regarding the new stream on his phone. He records a voicemail message that there will be a new anime-themed girls stream at half past eight on the same day. Suddenly he hears a familiar voice behind him. Someone is calling his name loudly. It turns out to be a witch. She says the hero clearly has a lot of time on his hands and asks if he plans to do illustrations for the novella. He says he has already made some sketches and is ready to give them to the witch. He takes them out of his backpack. Batten says he has about 70 of them. The witch is surprised at such a large number of sketches. She looks at the large stack of paper with surprise and begins to slowly answer Batten. She sees a drawing of a character that the hero has drawn using ink. She says that this amount should be enough. She is surprised and asks Batten when he finds time to do so many drawings. He replies that he makes them every day in the evenings in his spare time. She says she saw his stream yesterday. She says she's familiar with the work of speed artists, but she still finds the main character's drawing speed tremendous. Batten isn't sure what to say to her. He ponders the fact that he can't admit to being a cheater. She asks him if he is cheating, and the protagonist is shocked by such a question. He wonders if she found out about his assignment system. She asks if he used any software during the stream. He calms down and realizes that she meant a very different kind of fraud. Then he starts making excuses and says it's not about any apps. It's about the fact that his mother coached him very harshly as a child. The witch recalls how serious and strict the standards of the protagonist's mother were. She recalls how she herself was trained. The protagonist's mother made her pick peas into a bowl with chopsticks in five minutes and start over every time she failed. She also forced her to draw with a bell tied to her pen so that the bell never rang once during the entire drawing. The harshest thing she recalls is using weighted weights during training. Her strict mother made the witch do it all and reasoned that it would improve her speed and stamina. Remembering all this about the protagonist's mother, the witch stopped suspecting Batten of unscrupulous practices. She asked sympathetically how strictly her mother had taught him. He replied that he was much stricter than her other students. She said goodbye and said she would send the 70 illustrations she had made to the author of the novella. And he said goodbye to her in return. At half past eight that evening, he secured the camera over the canvas and began to prepare to conduct his broadcast tonight. Having prepared everything he needed, he decided it was time to get started and hit the start stream button. He started drawing and commentators wrote about how silent he was while doing his broadcast. He quickly started sketching an anime style sketch of a girl. The commentators tried to guess who he was trying to draw. He added a dress, cat ears, and a cane to the painted girl. Commentators discussed his work. He painted the girl, and the audience recognized her as Sakura. He received a lot of positive feedback regarding the speed of his work. There were more than 200 viewers on the stream. Batan decided to surprise his audience and came up with a new idea. He took a new sheet of paper and continued drawing a new character for his audience. It turned out to be Maruko and viewers began to debate whether or not she could be considered appropriate for today's stream topic. Immediately, I moved on to the next image and started drawing and coloring the character without slowing down. The viewers saw that the resulting character turned out to be Peppa Pig. The comments became more funny and humorous. Batten himself laughed happily when he read his audience's comments about the drawing. He decided that now he had warmed up 
he could move on to even faster image creation. He picked up the instrument and began to draw even faster than before, trying to wow his audience. He decided to apply even more tricks in order to entertain the audience and increase his viewers. Users saw what he was doing, drawing several sketches at the same time. Viewers marveled at this skill of the main character. The first image was the Amy Butterfly, the mascot of the streaming app. Why he drew a picture of Anita Haley in a jacket. Next up was Enma Ai. The commentators started writing about the main character's abilities and speed being inhuman. Next he showed an image of Sushin Tusu, an anime girl with animal ears. The next heroine the audience figured out by her distinctive outfit, it was Arya Holmes. Batten stretched his arm. In the chat room, people were marveling at the fact that he had already drawn eight characters in a short time. He has noticed that the increased strength rating helps when drawing, and his arm doesn't fatigue as much. He reflects on the fact that he doesn't have as much of an audience now as he did last time. But the reason for that is that he was given a disposable attraction ring then. But he's happy that the audience is now here not just for the lottery, but solely for his illustrations. He sees that he only needs to do five more drawings to finish the new phase of the illustrator assignment. He tells the chatbot that he can do more than ten today. The commentator responds vigorously to his statement, and he begins to draw with increased fervor. He continues to draw a dunshi several sketch on several pages not slowing down at all, neither the pace nor the speed of drawing. He paints several portraits. The first is of Victoria de Blois. Commentators favorably evaluate his images, then portrays Euclidwood Hellsight. In the chat room, users call him a genius. He manages to do several sketches at the same time with good quality of each one. Then he concentrates and starts drawing collectives of anime and manga characters at once. He first draws two anime schoolgirls who are recognized by the audience. At the same time, he shows the second painting. There's a drawing of five girls in basketball uniforms with a ball in their hands. His interface shows that he has made 99 of the required 100 images. He wants to do the last one. Chat doesn't know what to expect from the last illustration and waits for the result of the drawing. Batten finishes the illustration. Upon seeing the finished illustration, the audience is surprised at the author's choice. The painted heroine has a visible animal face and a cylinder hat. The image turns out to be Tony Chopper, who has been remade into a little anime girl by the protagonist. The chat starts writing comments to the author, both angry and amused. Batten abruptly interrupts the broadcast. Batten is pleased with himself and thinks the commentators might be pissed off at nothing since the stream is over. The system writes the end of the quest stage. He gets a boost to his imagination and drawing skills as well as points. He rejoices at his new level. He draws attention to a new characteristic in the form of imagination that he has not yet encountered. He thinks about this topic and begins to ponder it. He feels that his imagination has really become more developed. He likes the new feelings. He also feels an even more increased bonus to his drawing skills. He feels his newly acquired abilities with his whole body and anticipates future success. He believes he is now a superhuman in the world of drawing and notes that imagination goes well with a pumped up drawing skill. He also gets 100 points on his account. He opens the store and finds a pen worth 100 points. He decides to buy it with the currency he received and clicks on the purchase button. Immediately after purchase, a shiny handle made of ultra lightweight material appears in the palm of his hand. He remembers that she can change modes with taps. He tries this feature and sees that she can transform into a marker at will. He presses the same button once more to see but what else this device is capable of. A circular menu unfolds before him. He's fascinated by it. There are many different pen options there. He saw that there are not only many modes for drawing and writing, but also an eraser that can erase what is written with this pen. He looks at it happily. Batten is now sure that this pen will make him a god of drawing. A new message arrives on his phone. He's asked why he left the stream so abruptly and why he did not announce the date of the next broadcast. He realizes that really because of the rush he didn't say when viewers should expect the next stream. He writes that the next broadcast is tomorrow, at the same time. The topic of the next stream is characters with animal ears. He decides to look at the statistics of today's broadcast. The earnings for the day amounted to 130 yuan, much less than the previous time, but still more than working in fast food. He sees that he has already completed half of the first stage of the master streamer task. He rejoices at his quick success. As he watches the details of his streamings, a message arrives on his phone. It's from a witch. She wrote that out of the 70 images taken, the short story author selected 30. Also enclosed in the message is 5,000 yuan of earnings. Batan decides it's time to spend the money to complete the assignment. Batten comes to the dorm room in the evening. He opens the door and says that he's very tired for the day. He walks forward and sees that the room is dark and empty. None of his roommates and friends are there. He is surprised that no one is home at this time of day from the students yet. Suddenly, a distinct flick of a switch is heard in the room and the lights come on. 
Colorful holiday ribbons and confetti fly into the air with a loud, distinctive sound. There are three people standing in front of him with a cake in their hands. They are Noodles, Li Da Kiang, and Ge Xing Tag, a local reveler. Batten listens as they sing him a birthday song in English for the birthday boy. He then interrupts their singing and reminds them that his birthday is on Christmas Day and is surprised that they forgot that again. It's happened before. Ge Xin. Tage begins to explain that it is not at all necessary to celebrate a birthday only on the date of the birthday. Noodle says they decided to congratulate him because he took his life in his hands, started playing sports, and even became a streamer. Li Da Kiang tells Batten that starting a new life is like being born again. Hearing this, Batten is surprised by his friend's words. Then he gets upset and remembers his past life before rebirth. He starts thinking about it and thinks about the moment of his first death on an airplane. He agrees that his friend's words make sense and that he has indeed been reborn and started his life anew. The guys put a cake with candles on the table and suggest the main character start celebrating his birthday. He agrees with them and puts the book aside and slowly walks over to the table with the cake. Batan says that this celebration is more justified than the previous birthday celebrations. Noodles praises Batan in front of the others. Batten makes a wish out loud. He wants to be stronger, more charming, and skinnier. The hero says he now wants to be the best version of himself and blows out the candles on the cake. When he finishes making wishes, Noodles happily suggests that the others start sharing and eating cake. Batten picks up the smartphone and starts pressing something on it. A notification sound comes from it. You hear the sound of notifications from the other three guys. They pull out their phones and see that they have received cash gifts from Batten. Noodles asks if Batten has won the lottery, but he replies that he has already received earnings for drawing illustrations for the novella. Noodles praises his friend for his generosity, and Batten says there's a cash gift for everyone. Batten then picks up a plate with a piece of cake from the table and smilingly thanks Gaisina Tag for the treat. Jay Shintage smiles upon hearing the thanks and tells Batten that it's just nothing. Lee Da Kyung is eating cake and asks the others if they're going to go to the party that's being held tomorrow for student day. Noodles replies that he can't, since he and his girlfriend have already made plans to go to the movie theater together. Jay Shintage says he doesn't have the opportunity either because he had planned to do a workout with his girlfriend. Batten bites into his cake and replies that he's not going because he has a streamer on his schedule for the evening. Suddenly he remembers something. He loudly asks his friends if it is really a party for the student's day. Lee Da Kyung confirms this, not understanding why Batten shrieks so sharply for no reason. Batten reflects on the fact that because of his assignments, he focused on improving his life. But he had forgotten about helping others. He recalls that in his past life at this very party, Lee Da Kyung was beaten up when he went there. He remembers that this has knocked Lee Da Kyung out for a long time and decides to prevent such an outcome. Batan asks him if he plans on going to the party with the sophomore girl. Lee Da Kyung says yes and asks how Batan knew. Noodles is surprised and asks why Lee hasn't admitted to having a girlfriend. Lee replies that nothing is clear about the relationship yet. Ji Shintage calls him an adult. Batan says he made a reservation at a Mushan restaurant and paid. He says he can't go as he has to stream and suggests that Lee go instead. He says it will impress Lee Da Kyung's girlfriend. The others are surprised by such generosity. The guys start making excuses, hoping they'll get the tickets, but Batten says it's too late and only Lee will get them. Lee says it's a very expensive restaurant and that he can't accept such an expensive gift. Batten hugs him and says that this is much better than a college party. He also says that the other two would love the chance. Noodles and Ji Shintage together look at Batten with a disgruntled and frustrated expression. Lee Da Kyung agrees, but says he'll pay back the money when he gets paid for the tutor's work. Batten, with a smile on his face, replies to Lee that he can take his time getting his money back. Batten opens the bathroom door and tells his friends he's heading to the shower room. A loud click can be heard across the room as the bathroom door is locked. Next, he cranks the faucet and water starts pouring out of the shower, drowning out all sounds for his neighbors. He sits in the bathroom, fully dressed. Batten takes his cell phone out of his pocket. He dials his cousin and tells her he needs to make a reservation and asks her the price of a Valentine's dinner. She responds by listing what's included and says that including discount coupons, it will cost Batten 1,200 yuan. The guy agrees to the price and pays the bill from his phone, sending them to his cousin's number. He then sees that this amount has been counted towards the spender's completion of the task, and is happy to see that everyone is left with a win-win. Then he gets a message on his phone asking him if he can do illustrations for the novella. Batan sends a message in response, wondering what the question is about. It is explained to him that there is a writer whose short story has recently risen significantly in popularity. This writer has seen Batten's stream and would like his services. Batten replies that he will look at this novella and uses a web search. It's called World of Raging Cultivation. He sees the statistics on it. The novella has a good score and a large number of readers. He says these are impressive results. They write to him that the audience is rapidly increasing in size and that the author is actively advertising his brainchild. 
The page of the novel already has 100,000 subscribers. Batten reflects that he enjoys the process of streamers, but he does not use the drawings made on these streamers in any way. And if he did the artwork for the novella during the broadcast, it would be a win-win for all parties. He is sure that at this rate he will be able to conquer the pinnacle of artistry very quickly and starts laughing quite a bit. The protagonist is standing in the shower room. The sound of the water overrides the other sounds in the room. He is fully dressed and looking at his phone. He's standing near the waterhead. Batten writes in his phone that he's ready to take a job illustrating a short story. He writes that he recently finished working on illustrations for a short story by Xiaoti, a famous popular writer. His interlocutor was surprised and asked why he didn't tell him right away that he was working with Xiaoti's short stories. Batten gets the message that with this experience he can negotiate a higher salary for his services. Batten replies that price is secondary and that he has two conditions. First, he wants to reserve the right to stream the process of drawing illustrations. And secondly, he wants his name and a link to his channel in the list of authors of the novel. The interlocutor praises him for his prudence and says he will ask the author about these conditions. Batten writes a thank you message and sends it off. He receives a reply very soon. The author agrees to have Batten host the streamings and has promised to add mentions of his name in an upcoming issue. He also agreed to periodically add his link on his channel. As for payment, he offers one and a half thousand yuan for 10 drawings each week. An interlocutor writes a message saying he thinks these terms are favorable to Batten. Batan ponders that this equates to 150 yuan per drawing. But he considers the main benefit from such a thing to be advertising and an increase in the number of viewers at his broadcasts. Batten types a message and writes that the conditions are right for him and that he is willing to work as an illustrator. He receives in return a link to the contact of the author of the novella and can now correspond with him without intermediaries. Batan writes to an author nicknamed Pintu with a greeting. Instead of replying, the writer sends 150,000 yuan for the work up front. Batan notices how little this man talks. Then he decides to wash up since he's already in the shower room. Batten slowly begins to shed his street clothes and heads for the shower. He stands under the streams of water and plans his timing. He has decided to read the novella first and then start making images for it. In the evening two days later, he goes to the academy's workshop. There, he thinks about the fact that the short story has turned out to be large and its storyline confusing. He fixes the camera over the canvas and prepares to finally start working on the illustrations for the novella. He reflects on the fact that his streams keep the same number of viewers, but there is no growth. The task is progressing slowly. But he hopes this can be remedied by having readers of the short story he illustrated come to his streamers. With that thought in mind, he picks up his glowing pen and prepares to begin conducting the broadcast and drawing. He begins the stream. He also writes to the audience that he is doing illustrations for the novella, in addition to the usual drawings and plans to do 10 images today. He can see from the chat that the commercials are already running. He begins to paint on the canvas and the audience sees that the image looks like a Chinese dragon. New viewers are surprised at the speed of the hero's drawing and try to guess what he's drawing. Then the audience sees the finished illustration of the big blue dragon and Batten receives positive comments. The viewers who came because of the novelization start sending gifts and writing comments in the chat room. Batten is happy that his new characteristics are having a clear effect. The comments give him confidence and he feels like a fish in water in such an environment. Batten again takes on the next canvas to paint at breakneck speed. He draws the character Liu Shen as a girl, but the chat starts to assure him that at the end of the novella it turns out to be a man. Batten berates himself for not reading to the end, but the commenters for the most part don't care about the gender of the character. He takes a new sheet of paper and tells the audience that it's time to start illustrating for the short story, World of Raging Cultivation. He draws several characters. The audience cheers at the familiar characters and they say that's what they came to the stream for. Batten looks at the progress screen and sees that he has only a little bit left to complete the first stage of the task. He announces that there is only one drawing left for today and that he will portray a minor character this time. He begins to draw. An overweight character gradually appears on the paper. Batten thinks about the fact that fat characters often exist in works just for the sake of a joke and are not taken seriously by anyone. He thinks about the fact that such characters are usually funny, useless, and weak. He complains that the fat people in the works are not strong and tough, nor are they the main characters. A system notification appears stating that Batten has completed the first stage of the Stream Master task. Guy rejoices at the boost to the charm characteristic he received for completing this quest. He looks at his reflection in the window and notices that his appearance has not changed in any way. He is not sure how to test the effect of this indicator. He decides not to show his face to the stream viewers and thinks the one unit bonus won't affect anything. In the comments they start complaining that nothing much is happening on the stream. Batten hears the concierge's voice behind him. He is told that it is 11 o'clock in the evening and that it is time to leave the workshop. Batten realizes that it's been a long time 
and that he's already wasted three hours on this broadcast. He apologizes for being late and says he's about to leave the workshop. The concierge notices his appearance and eyes and finds herself a bit shocked by his appearance. She kindly suggests he still mind his own business and doesn't want to disturb him. He remembers that she's usually mean and spiteful and is surprised at how nice she's being to him. He then realizes that this is the effect of the increased charm characteristic. The extra point of this characteristic has changed the woman's attitude. He goes back to the drawing and decides that even though he is fat, he will be the protagonist of his life. The finished drawing is the main character himself, drawn in fantasy clothing. Chat wonders who the author has portrayed. He bids the audience farewell and says the next broadcast will be the next day at the same time, half past eight. He rejoices at the increase in audience and realizes it's because of the fans of the novella. He is happy to have accepted this order. He decides to go to the stadium and then return to the dormitory to test the effects of his new charm boost. Then he sees a scuffle between students on the street in front of him. Lee Da Kiang is among them. Batten sees that Lee Da Kiang and his girlfriend are clearly being harassed by three hooligans. The three of them surround the couple. The bully smugly looks at the guy and the girl trying to intimidate them. Lee Da Kiang covers the girl with himself. His face shows anger and determination. The girl behind him is scared. Batten resents the fact that he apparently cannot change the course of events, even if he intervenes using knowledge from a previous life. The girl yells at the bully about how they stopped dating a long time ago. She tells him to get away from her and her love life. Batten now realizes why in his past life, Lee was beaten up. He notices that the bully took his buddies with him instead of dealing with it alone. The bully takes Lee by the collar and starts telling the girl to keep quiet and not interfere with their showdown. Batten is cursing in his thoughts. He's not sure how he should handle this situation. He realizes that he can't just observe the situation, and remembers that Lee will walk around depressed for a long time after this encounter. But Batten isn't sure if it's okay to intervene and change history if it already happened in his past life. Lee Da Kyung tries to calm the bullies down and says there's no reason to pick on him if they've already broken up with the girl. The bully's friends tell the girl that Lee is a coward and not worth dating and blame her for choosing such a guy. The bully tells his buddies to hold Lee while he teaches him a lesson in behavior. But then the voice of the protagonist is heard behind him, calling out to the bullies. Batten holds his buddies by the necks and tells them they need to hurry before security arrives. The friends try to get out of Batten's grip, but they can't do anything, and they only flounder helplessly in his arms. They marvel at the hero's strength. This power he has thanks to the pumping of characteristics after completing the tasks. Batten holds up two guys and tells the bully to start a one-on-one -on -one fight with Lee without the help of his friends. He thinks about the fact that even if Lee Da Kyung loses, it will at least be a fair fight. Lee Da Kyung sees Batan and is excited to see him show up and intervene in the fight. The head bully grudgingly asks Batten who he even is and where he came from. He then tells his friends that they've practiced martial arts and shouldn't be frozen in his grip like this. Batten begins to tell the bullies a story about what happened in the same place the day before yesterday. A girl was standing in the middle of the street yelling about a guy stealing something from her in broad daylight. Batten was outside at the time and heard this. He reacted quickly and attacked the thief. He pounced on the guy and quickly knocked him to the ground. The girl was shocked by such interference. Then it turned out the guy stole her time. Batten says it was an awkward situation and that it sounds like an anecdote. One of the bully's buddies heard about the incident and knows that the alleged thief had broken bones afterward. His other buddy is unhappy with what's going on and is confident that Batten can easily beat them. Batten intimidates the guys and tells them that the thief from the day before yesterday will not be envied. They grudgingly agree. The main bully doesn't know Batan and ponders who he is, whether he knows Lee Da Kyung, and whether the three of them can beat him in a fight. At the same time, Batan looks at Lee Da Kyung and I winks at him, signaling him. Lee notices it. The protagonist thinks with confidence that it's time to give Lee a reason to respect Batan. Lee Da Kyung looks at his friend. He understands Batan's signal and moves into action. He places his hand confidently on the bully's shoulder. The man is surprised and looks at the guy. Lee starts talking about how he likes the girl and that he is ready here and now to sort out the problems between himself and the bully. He says they can part ways in peace, provided the bully doesn't harass her anymore. Otherwise, Lee is prepared to leave a few bruises on him. The bully is startled. He didn't expect Lee to react this way at all. He starts to sweat and get nervous. Batten says that the bully is already sweating even though the fight hasn't started. He scoffs at the fact that he's already blown this situation. The bully is angry, but he can't do anything about Batten holding his friends down. He swears at him in his mind. He starts to back away, points at Lee, and says he'll deal with him yet. He yells that he'll be back again and starts running with all his legs out of there, leaving his buddies in Batten's hands. Batten says that they are now left without a spectacle and suggests that both guys fight him. One of them timidly refuses and says that the dormitory is about to close, so there's no need to fight. Batten lets them leave and says they'll have a fight next time. The two of them run out of there, and one of them yells that he hopes they never have to fight him ever. 
Batten is proud of himself and believes he has earned the title of the storm of all Academy bullies for today's scuffle. He is then surprised to notice Lee Da-kyung and his girlfriend, who start saying something to each other. The girl says that she agrees to go out with him. Lee replies that it is a good choice, since she is behind him like a stone wall. Batten, seeing this, began to envy them. He wonders when he will finally stop being lonely. He smiles as he realizes that he can alter events from his past life, after all. He then curses at himself when he remembers that he still has to practice at the stadium today. He goes to the sports field and starts running the desired distance in a circle. The system notification says that he managed to run 5 kilometers in less than 40 minutes. He thinks about the fact that his current running pace does not tire him, and that he can increase his planned running distance. He's excited to think about the fact that he only has 3 kilometers to go, and he will be able to finish the next stage of the task and receive a performance award. While he's still running, a deep, dark night is already descending on the street. He doesn't give up and keeps running until he gains the right distance to complete the quest. Finally, the system indicates that he has completed the task. He gets a boost to his speed index and 50 points. He's happy about that. He moves, feeling his increased speed, and thinking about the fact that he has not only increased performance, but he has developed physically. He's thinking about how much good this day has done, and then he hears a familiar voice behind him asking if he's still running every day. Batten is surprised and begins to turn his head around to see who is addressing him. It turns out to be Wu Tung who says hello, waves at him, and tells him they haven't seen him in a while. The protagonist thinks about the fact that they haven't met in 87 hours. He is happy to meet the girl. They stand in the stadium and try to explain themselves. They both start talking about the last meeting at the same time. Batten starts first. He says he wanted to apologize, but he couldn't find her and didn't meet her at the stadium. She calms him down and tells him that it was just an overreaction from her brother. In her thoughts, she notes that she no longer feels awkward around him and finds it odd. Batten interrogates her if it was really her brother in the workshop then. She says he has come to invite her to her 13th brother's wedding. Batten is surprised to see so many children in the family. He imagines a royal dynasty with compares her brother to the 13th in line to the throne. She explains to Batten that in her family she has 18 older brothers and 13 younger brothers. Batten is shocked at these numbers. He adds it all up and gets that she has 31 brothers in her family. He dumbfoundedly asks why there are such a large number of them. Wu Tung tells him it's a long story. She starts talking about her family tree. It turns out that her case had six brothers. They each had three or four children and all were only boys. In her father's generation, 25 boys were born. And there was not a single female child there except for her. Each of her uncles has several sons, and she's the only girl in three generations. Wu Tung has 31 brothers and not a single sister in the entire family. Batten is extremely surprised and asks the girl if she's playing a prank on him right now. She says it's all pure truth, even though it sounds unbelievable. She begins to tell him a story from her own childhood. During her time at school, boys bullied girls by clinging nasty prickly plants to their hair. One of the boys stuck Wu Tung with many of these plants at once, causing her to have to pull them out of her hair for a long time. After school, a whole bunch of boys from different classes who were her brothers pounced on that bully. Then her uncles came to the school, and the principal had no luck getting the bully out of the hands of dozens of angry brothers. In the end, the entire situation was only resolved by leveraging the director's ties to a political party. Batten recalls that he heard the story and wonders if Wu Tung was the girl. He wonders if it's hard for her to date guys with so many brothers. She agrees, and says she sometimes unwittingly compares other guys to her caring brothers. She also says that she has a hard time feeling interested in guys, because she feels like she already knows everything about them. Batten says she was lucky to have many brothers who were in awe of her. He thinks it would have been much more difficult with so many sisters. She looks at him and wonders for a second why Batten said that. She then asks if he was talking about himself when he mentioned his sisters, and asks him to tell a story about himself. The character begins tentatively telling the girl a story about his growing up and his family. He had four older sisters and three younger sisters. He was the only boy in the family and among the relatives. At a small age, his sisters used to dress him up as a girl altogether. But then they got older and stopped doing it. And after that, they all together started actively and constantly feeding him a variety of food, which made him fat. He says he now always carries his sister's love in the form of a belly. Wu Tung laughs and says he has grown big. She also tells Batten that no one in her family has a physique like his. Batten is surprised, and decides that she is the one flirting with him. He then thinks it must be due to the increased charm characteristic. She immediately turns around quickly and says she needs to start her run already. She ponders while running about why she is acting this way in her presence and why she has told him so much. Batten feels motivated after the dialogue. He is confident that he can run 500 kilometers now. He struggles to catch up with a girl on the running track. She asks him if he's had enough of running. He says he has already run 8 kilometers, but he has to run 10. He is already tired and sweaty. 
Wu Tun is surprised at such a long distance of Batten's running, and at first doesn't believe his words. He says with a confident face that he is constantly growing and improving his running skills on a daily basis. He barely runs a few more laps and is already very tired. It is already dark outside and the starry sky is visible. He struggles to keep running. He tells Wu Tung to run ahead, and he will catch up with her a little later. She advises him to stop running after 10 kilometers or he risks not getting out of bed tomorrow morning. Batten is barely on his feet anymore and finally stops running, completely exhausted and drained of energy. He looks sadly after Wu Tun. She continues to run further down the stadium without looking back at him. The protagonist stands still, sweat pouring from him in hail. Batten is already extremely tired. On the next lap, Wu Tung breaks beside him and briefly stops his run. She tells Batten that there will be a small charity marathon next week. She asks if he is interested in something like that. Batten suddenly sees a notification from the system. He's surprised that it happened again while he was talking to Wu Tung. The assignment requires a set of champion glory points. He notices that the third time the dialogue with Wu Tun has caused a new task to appear. He ponders whether this girl is connected to the main character's job system. He bluntly asks her if she is an NPS and she doesn't understand what he's talking about. She decides he's overworked and is a little dumb because of it. She says she's been appointed by the Academy as one of the persons in charge of the marathon. Batten eagerly asks if he can sign up to participate in this charity marathon. She responds positively and wants to send him the link to the marathon, but she doesn't have his contact until now. She holds out her phone to him and tells him to scan her code from the social networking app. Batan is surprised by this and pulls out his smartphone to scan her contact. He scans the code and rejoices in his thoughts that finally, after all this time, he was able to add her to his friend list. At night he comes back to the dorm and lies down on his bed. He decides to look up information about his new assignment champion. He sees that it has no stages. Instead, glory points immediately give new rewards in the form of points and characterization boosts by half a percent each time. But the tasks themselves are difficult. To get 100 points, he would have to take first place in the world championship 20 times. He goes to bed deciding to leave this task alone for now as it is not urgent and can be ignored for now. He then pulls out his phone and is excited about today's happenings, especially the fact that he was able to add Wu Tung to his friend list. But so far she hasn't responded to his request in any way. He considers whether to write and remind her, but immediately changes his mind and decides to wait. Batten decides to look at her social media posts and photos for now. That way he can learn a lot about her without being intrusive in his messages. He thinks about the fact that there might be cute pictures of a girl on her account and can't stop thinking about her. With these thoughts in mind, he opens her page. He is disappointed when he sees that there is nothing on her page other than a post about the marathon. One entry about the charity marathon is the only thing on her account. He's getting upset about it. He decides to at least put a like on the post since he's already here and clicks the appropriate button. When you click on the like button below the marathon entry, a distinctive sound is emitted. The protagonist is struck by a bright light and is surprised to see that he has a new assignment open up. This task is called Crazy Liker, and it requires clicking on likes on the internet. As a reward, you can get the visibility characteristic pumped up. 